Welcome to Of Nights and Nats. When last we met, the party survived the onslaught of a single crystalline scorpion, and Seth uncovered another by casting magical fire into its domain as it appeared to have fed off of such a thing. Uh, the party fled the scene after surviving that initial combat, leaving Seth behind, who was admittedly just too far out of sight. Perhaps they had better reason to have left him behind. I'm not sure. Uh, he narrowly escaped the beast in a harrowing game of cat and mouse. The party reconvened and confronted Seth over giving up the child Teth back in Agravorn to Gilded Frost, who appeared to be a fallen angel or a Dumai. Um, now that was in our last arc, so for those of you who have missed it, um, maybe it will come back up in some more detail in the near future. However, uh, that information could probably be found in YouTube recaps. Um, they, the party, agreed to carry on together for now and rest. During that rest, they encountered a gnome watching them, a gnome by the name Richard Quickpick the uh, Third, a quirky fellow who wasn't very good at his spycraft. <laughs> he brought them to the surviving gnomes in the mines nearby, and among those gnomes, uh, Ren found his father Frombear, and a determined-looking gnome by the name of Tyvil Agor, the station commander. The gnomes warned the party that the disturbance came from the Brimsink Trench, and possibly from the GCMC, the Gloaming Center for Magical Cataloging within. And they gave Ren an amulet that would allow him to enter the compound. They also warned the party that they have two days to attempt to solve the problems in Gloamlight before the gnomish refugees will run out of food and attempt to flee the cavern. When they arrive at the GCMC, the party took an elevator down, and thanks to Ren's rope, and then they arrived in a carnage-stricken hall that appeared to be had it appeared to have corridors that moved of their own accord. So, Ren then had a vision, unbeknownst to the party, and he did manage to succeed on that check. So. The party probably isn't quite aware that he had a little bit of a conniption, but he saw some horrifying things. And before we begin, we do have a narrative. However, I did not record it this week, so I'm going to read it. I ran out of time. Just the same? That's okay. Again. Yeah, I'll just read it right here. So um, I'll just keep the, the music playing and... Um, feel free to mute yourselves, but I'm not terribly worried about it. Ren sat back... <clears throat> Ren sat at the back of a large chamber in Gloamlight Academy. It was a half-circle room with a high ceiling, which, for gnomes, was an unusual thing. The rows of pews arced out before the dais at the center of the far podium, upon which a robed gnome spoke with magically augmented voice. His gold-ringed fingers glittered in the distant firelight, and Ren shifted his weight uneasily, in the hard wooden seat. And thusly, we will be ending all duties and directives of the Globe Light Center for Magical Cataloging effective immediately. You will all be receiving your assignments shortly. The fate of this city, our people, rests in your hands. Ren got to his feet with the rest of the gnomes and felt the tingle of ascending spell and heard a voice telling him where to go. He sidled into a crowd of gnomes outside the academy, overlooking the Brimsink Trench. A warm, steamy breeze roiled over him comfortably, and he saw Avi waiting beyond, a cordoned rope. He hailed Ren with a smile and waved and spoke. Looks like Segojana has brought us together once more, boy. We're going to the surface to find answers, and hopefully a cure. So, without further ado, the party has arrived at the GCMC. The elevator that they stepped out of had been torn inward, inch-thick steel mysteriously ravaged. Within the first hall, the eerie length of the hallway appears to be intersected multiple times with a nearly imperceptible seam in the steel every 20 feet or so. The three lengths of chamber were mostly clear, but some at the far end of the hall, there was a monstrous steel grate in the wall with a series of circular iron gaskets interwoven behind the grills. Before the party is a small control panel with flashing lights and a switch with three buttons. 
So, there's a couple unusual things. As the party sets forward into this corridor, originally you did see that some of these seemed partitions, the corridors, they can move on their own and they sort of rotate out of view as though the, the GCMC is, I wouldn't say alive, but able to move itself of its own accord. And as soon as you all step forward into the first portion of this hallway, all of these corridors begin to move and you can feel it lurch to life under you as it begins to slide down into the earth. And you can't see anything as, as the wall in front of you just becomes pure cement. Um, and then it rotates back up, affording you another view of the hall. And the closest next segment is jammed in place. You can see it sort of jerking against its mechanisms, but it seems to be stuck. And upon it, there is a large cocoon sort of glistening, but it's not moving otherwise. And the segment of hall beyond that does indeed continue moving. However, it is layered with a sort of electrical fire. You can see it's it's very light blue, maybe six inches off the ground, just constant burning. And that is also rotating. So two of them are rotating, one is broken, and then at the far end, with the, that large grill in the far end, you can see there is a mechanism that's not moving, and a pool of blood below it, with it's littered with corpses before it. So just getting the visual right, can I imagine like a, a revolver chamber uh, that's turning, and like a few of those next to each other? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's, but it's like the whole way down the barrel um let's switch to the camera then oh. just so i can yeah, point yeah. at stuff okay we're gonna be doing this a few times so this is the control panel that you see bryce right here it's uh -huh, sorry, uh -huh. it's sideways this switch goes up and down and then there are three buttons okay and so this is the 20 by 20 square that you're on. It is rotating every now and then. It's just in a constant loop. You're just rotating like this. We are rotating? Yeah, it's it's like each one is the chamber of that revolver. They're Got all it. rotating though, except for the second one, which appears to be jammed in place. But we're not spinning, so it's on some gimbal that keeps us from like tilting off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it'd be like a, a carnival ride almost. Okay, okay. <laughs> Fascinating. Um, so we can't see that cocoon always. We can only see it when we pass every, every. I don't know. Correct. Yeah. Every every okay. couple every like six seconds, I would say around is it's moving pretty quickly. You're not sure yeah. how many other chambers are are also there, but the fire is there every time. But you can see it moving in tandem with you, and then okay beyond that, that hallway is stable. These all seem to be moving the same direction, either clockwise or counterclockwise? Yeah, I would say clockwise, probably. Just because I have the arrows drawn out. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, guys, I see this control panel. Mm -hmm. oh, we got to make our way forward. Let's, uh, let's press some buttons. Okay. okay. Why not throw the switch first to see if it turns the whole machine off? Uh, good idea. Thank you. Are, are there any labels on the, as I approach the control panel, are there any labels or? There are no labels. Okay. Um, I'll take Seth's suggestion and try the switch. Which direction do you push the switch? Uh, toward, toward us. Towards you? Yeah. Okay. Maybe All right. going that way. I'm trying to show with the mouse on the yeah, screen. Yeah. I'm sorry. It is sideways just because I couldn't fit it. Um, no, that's good. It makes it's a little okay. frustrating, but. It's okay. <laughs> Thank you, Ben. It's okay. All right. Hmm. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's a start. Roll for initiative. Oh, God. All right. You flip the switch. Um, are you waiting until you can see down the hallway to flip the switch? Yeah. Okay. You do so, and you see behind that grill at the far end, 
a large fan blasts to life, spinning immediately. It's almost like it's some sort of security measure. And you flip the switch towards yourself, correct? Yeah. Okay, so the fan blasts down, throwing the entire party back into the elevator. Um, I would like dexterity saves from... Oh, dear Lord. All of you. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, that's cool. <laughs> it's all right, because there's a few other things happening. Too. Kevin got a seven. I'm I got a two. Two? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, sorry. I, I forgot. I have a plus one to that. Three. Hey. There you go. I got a three also. <laughs> what the hell, guys? Oh, no. <laughs> we need to re microwave the dice, I think. <laughs> this is. <laughs> Rice method so far, so good. 19. Right. Hey. <laughs> I got to roll for book one, too. Hmm. <laughs> Bye, bookworm. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Bookworm, Kevin, uh, Ren, what did you get? Three. Three, okay. Okay, I can't see us anymore, Gabe. You're, you, we're behind the pictures of, yeah, of that's, us. Yeah, that's okay. Okay. Just, I'm, cause uh, technically you've been blown back into the elevator, just which is still sure. down. Mm -hmm. um, I will allow a save, or, or actually, rather, Drea and Seth, you can choose to remain in this room or get blown back with the party, because you succeeded on your check. Um, well, if I'm holding my ground, could I actually uh, use the cantrip Gust to try and put it back into neutral? Do you want to flip a switch with Gust? Yeah, I mean, if I can, I, that's fine. It's just, I know it's a little unorthodox. If you got, like, Mage Hand or something, no mage hand, just Gus. Okay. It's, Gus is, I mean, it's, it's like it's, it's, it's like a, a mechanical board. Like I've a, seen a Pokemon switch. Gabe. I'm pretty sure Pidgeotto could pull this <laughs> off. If you <laughs> testing me real early in the session. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but so Seth, you're more than welcome to. I'll, I'll allow you to make that as a reaction, and you do blast the wind over it, but it does not appear to have any effect. Okay, but I mean, it does let you know that. It, like magic didn't interfere with it or anything. Okay. Um, however, there's a couple unusual things. So, Drea, are you remaining on the the chamber? Yeah, I'll remain. Okay. Seth, are you remaining as well? Yes. Okay. So the two of you are taken off the side, and that allows the party that got blown back into the elevator because the doors are just rent inward to see what is on the other third chamber which unfortunately is an undead beholder that fires a ray at the new enemies so, uh, bookworm is one kevin you're two thok three ren four and two so uh kevin you are going to be struck by a ray undead beholder. No. This is an amazing start. <laughs> One. Okay. I need a constitution saving throw from you, Kevin. That is a crit fail. Okay. Oh. You are struck right in the chest by a purple ray. And Kevin just goes rigid and falls over paralyzed. Uh, Kevin, you are paralyzed for one minute. You can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of your turns. Ending the effect on a success. Cool. Okay. Can you How tell I me what I need to roll to succeed? Or I'll just find I mean, out. I can if you want, but that's... No, oh, I'll wait. I mean, that's fine. Okay. All right. Um, however, the, the chambers are still rotating. However, no one is at that. The fan continues to blow towards you. So you have this very, very, very strong wind pushing you back into the elevator, and you're going to have to fight against that. Um, some other things have happened this round. All these corpses have been thrown 20 feet forward. And now they are on the trail with the undead beholder, and they go out of sight again. Mm. Okay. And then, at the end of that round, the beginning of this, your allies have returned to the front. The winds still blow. 
what would all of you like to do? And we can actually, we should probably just roll uh, initiative here. If you haven't already, so that I can get you in an order that we can follow. Okay. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Oh, it hits so good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't listen to these long enough to realize they have like stopped it ten minutes okay. in. It sounds like something out of The Witcher. It's not bad. I do like it. It's just a little out of left field there. Bookworm, my boy. Oof. Not a good day for bookworm. All right. Ren, it is your turn first. Um, I want to. These are out. These are gone. I want to try to make my way to the button and push it the other direction. Okay, I will need uh, a, the, the lever. Sorry. Yeah, I will need a strength athletics check. Uh, that's a one. Okay. Um, every, every one foot of movement is four feet of movement while the wind is on you. Okay. And you are 20 feet away. So I make it like a square, basically. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Okay. So Ren, you, you push forward into the wind and you're holding fast. Okay. I'll just lean against the side to reduce my... <clears throat> uh, yeah, exactly. Just turn. Very good, very good. Um, Seth, it is your turn. All right. Um, I will... I'll just try to do the same. I'll try and go for the lever and push it in the other direction. Okay. Uh, make a strength athletics check. Sure. It's a crit fail. All right. I'm not going to have you get blown backwards, but uh, you also do have times. It's it's times four movement. So every one foot you travel is four feet of movement required. Okay. Would you still like to head that direction? Just like one square? Uh, yeah, yeah. That's 20 feet, basically, of movement. You could dash if you wanted to go another one. And Ryan, I would I would let you do that as well. Sure. Do uh, have... No need to wreck on it. Okay. Do I still have my action? Yeah, that's what I would allow you to use your action to dash. Is what I'm saying. Oh, all right. Um, actually, then move me back five feet. I won't dash. Uh, I'm just gonna cast mage armor. Okay. I mean, you you can still move the five feet. That's just your move. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's your regular move. Oh uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't, no, I would have. I didn't want to do the dash. I'll just. Yeah. Okay. I, I hadn't moved you yet for that. I. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's gonna be my turn then. Okay. All right, Kevin, it is your turn. I roll to see if I am unparalyzed. Oh, yeah. Uh, that... <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. So that's at the end of your turn, just so you know. But yes, uh, make a constitution saving throw. Well, before I roll to find if I'm unparalyzed, I run 30 feet and fight <laughs> off. <laughs> I forgot. I'll go ahead and use uh, 19. Okay, you are not paralyzed any longer. You hey! have shaken the effect off. There we go. Unfortunately, that is still your turn. Yeah, I figured. I thought you were going to say, unfortunately, hits you again. You're re-paralyzed. <laughs> Suck it, noob. And I was going to be sad. <laughs> I just, uh, with the um, uh, with the beholder, I always roll all random. So I yeah, assign yeah. you numbers, and I, it's all rolls, because I feel terrible otherwise. Okay. All right. Uh, Drea, it is your turn. Sorry, everything's so blurry over there. You are technically right here. Hmm. Can I try and da -da 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 dash? <laughs> yes. Uh, make a strength athletics check. Strength or athletics? 
Strength and athletics. <clears throat> They're the one and the same. Wow. That's a five. Oh man, wind. Your mortal enemy. All right, so you only you, you make it two. You're five feet away. You're the closest of everyone. Oh, all right. No one is succeeding on this check. Uh, all right. Okay, is that your turn, Drea? Yeah. Okay, bookworm's turn. Bookworm! Bookworm makes it three squares. And he's back on the the platform where he appears to want to be. Uh, Fuck. What would you like to do? You are all the way at the far back end. I kind of just like take a look at Kevin since it looked like he got knocked out. I'm like, mm, yes, didn't defecate. This is good. All right. And then I start to make my way towards the uh, <laughs> switch that everybody's trying to get to. How do you <laughs> know, know, sir? First of all, <laughs> lack of brown stains. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 16 on the strength okay. athletics check. All right, everything is it costs you two movement. Okay. So you can make it 10, 20, 30. You can make it all the way up to Drea. You can make it farther, but you'll have to dash. Uh, I won't be able to interact with it if I dash, though, correct? I'd just be there. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll hang there. Okay. Okay. Actually, can I... <laughs> Before my turn is over, over... Since I use an action, can I prepare an action to throw a javelin at the beholder if it comes back into sight? You can. Okay, I'll do that. Okay. Um, all right, so the round ends. The chamber rotates out of view again. You see the, the cement wall come before you. Kevin is left alone up top as the beholder comes back into view and his party has disappeared. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ben. You're the only person that can be s struck. Yep. <laughs> so I have to. Roll. But at least you get to make a check. So, yeah. come on, roll, baby, roll. I need a Constitution saving throw, Benjamin. Please succeed. <laughs> Six. <laughs> oh my God. You say 36 necrotic damage, as Boy. black and purple ray slam into your chest. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Necrotic is in like I don't get that back. Uh, no, no, it's it's not reducing your maximum hit point. Thank God, okay. It was <laughs> fortunately it was not the disintegration ray. <laughs> which might have killed you permanently. Anyway. So <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so the undead beholder rotates back out, but not before the corpses get thrown another twenty feet. Oh, jeez. Oh, no. Obstacle course. Uh, and they start to bounce dangerously close to the sack that's sort of just like wobbling like day old jello in the wind. <laughs> anyway, um, back to the top of the order. The party rotates back into view. The beholder is gone. Uh, the fire has returned. And Ren, it is your turn. Uh, do I need a strength check? Uh, if you want to try and make better movement, basically, yes. Oh uh, yeah, I'll do that. Uh, that's a six. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so you still have times, it's still times for movement, basically. Okay, I move up one square. All right. I should let you all know that the corpses that have slowly been bouncing through are also now on fire because they've rolled through the fire. <laughs> mm. um, and the egg sack may or may not be catching a flame as well, but you're all very busy with this wind in your face. Um, Seth, it is your turn. Okay. Um, which one am I? This guy. Okay. Um, I 
guess move me, move me left one. There you go, perfect. Okay. Um, <laughs> and I will. You're gonna cast lightning bolt at something, aren't you? No, 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 not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> fireball! Fireball! Uh, you know, fireball! <laughs> initially, I was going to cast fire on the cocoon, but it's already on fire, so it takes uh, care of that. I mean, it's only a little on fire. You can always make it more on fire. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> um. I uh, I will actually cast a uh, blank to try and get into the ethereal plane. Okay. If you, yeah, you are more than welcome to do so. Okay. Uh, Kevin, it is your turn. I do not disappear. Okay. Seth, dice is, dice Seth, is broken. Seth mutters and incants a spell and then you just hear a <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kevin, it is your turn. All right. I'm going to turn into a bear. <laughs> Okay. And then I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna get him again by the guy. Would you like to make a strength athletics check for me if you're moving forward? Yeah. Okay. And again, no matter what, you will be able to make it onto the platform. This is just to ensure that you can make it farther. Uh, it's a 17. Okay. Yeah, so you're only, it's just difficult terrain for you, so just halved movement. Okay. And you are a bear. I'm a bear. You're a bear. Oh no, I didn't fix the. Uh... I'll fix that. I could have sworn I left them out. Oh, they're there. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Kevin. That's my turn. I'm moving Where? forward like everyone else. Just as much as you can? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you can move 15 feet, you can move 20. You have like, what, 40 movement? I have 40 movement. Okay, so you can move 20 feet if you want. Yeah, I'll move 20 feet. I don't even, full disclosure, once I got paralyzed, I lost track of what we're even doing. Okay. <laughs> like what our intention is. It's pretty much just what Kevin would do, so that's. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm living my role right now. Yeah. Okay, uh, Dre, it is your turn. You are right in front, you need to move five more feet. Ooh, go, go, go. That's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so you move, you're on the control panel. You see this. That's my my finger up there, I'm sorry. Uh... So there's, there's the switch. I don't know if Ren really described what he did to the party, but you probably heard Seth say, flip the switch. I'll flip the switch the other direction from whatever it is now. Any direction but what it is. Okay. You can also push a button. I don't really, you know, there's just options. Eek. You flip the switch to the other direction. We're all about to go rolling is, through some fire. Is there, is there a neutral <laughs> ground between them? Like, Technically, it's... yes. Can there is a neutral it? position. Uh, can I click it to, to the middle part? You may, yeah. All right. It's much less fun than me taking advantage of what you said earlier. <laughs> but yes, <laughs> so you can you can just put it to the neutral spot. The wind dies down. The fan turns off. <laughs> However, um, you all get rotated down again. Actually, no. Wait, well, let's go through the rest. Bookworm's turn. Bookworm doesn't know what the hell he's doing. He runs over to Seth, and then he looks up and he realizes he doesn't want to be next to Seth, so he runs back over. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, it is your turn. Um, I can't really share the space with Drea, so I'm kind of stuck on economy unless I want to go into the middle room. You can, you can, I'll say that you can still share the space with her with the, this, for the sake of interacting with the console briefly. Okay. It's just we're gonna have you just spend movement to come back, just so you're not like I'm not okay. gonna just allow you to, to just interact with it. You could crowd around it. Okay. Um, let me press the top button. Top, top button. Okay. Top left corner. Okay, like one second like above the. Yes. Okay. Thok runs over and pushes a button. The platform you are all standing on halts with a. a 
Yeah. Both right. good and bad. Yes, Doc, that ends to your turn. You are all right on this. No. Yeah, let me... Are oh, we with the monster, is... are we... And now that the round has ended and C comes back into view, the monster's basically on like a rotisserie. So he comes back into view, ah, panics okay. and sees you, fires off a ray at one of you, which he's going to roll a d6. One, two, three, four, five. Ren, I'm sorry. Make a constitution saving throw as that same black purple eye stock fires off a ray. 16? 16 will succeed. <laughs> you take 18 necrotic damage. Ow! As the blast rails <clears throat> through you, enervating and sapping your strength. And then the beholder just <laughs> fades out of you again. Uh, that'll take us back to the top of the order. Ren, it is your turn. You've just been rocked with this beam. However, you can share a space with medium-sized allies. You are small. Okay. Um... Sorry, I was just updating my health. Um... Mm -hmm. Is the beholder still in view, or it, it has phased out of view? Uh, it's rotated out. It rotates at the end of the, the... I have it go last, basically. Okay. And the corpses did not move this round because the fan was turned off. Got it. Uh, let me try to briefly press one of the other buttons. The top, top right. Okay, so this one? Yeah. All right, you push the button, and the beholder's chamber rattles to a stop. Where? Uh, out of view. So the beholder boy is out of view. Okay. So it's just fire now, that, that light blue flame, which I drew in orange and red, but okay. decided would be blue right now, apparently. <laughs> and it twists! <tweets>. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Your senses deceive you! <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna use the bonus action to heal a teeny bit. Okay. But that's my turn. Okay. All right. Uh, Seth, your turn. Okay. Uh, which button has been pressed yet? Uh, the uh, is as you can see at the bottom right. The bottom right. Yeah, the one right. to the right of the switch. Okay, um, I'll move over there and I'll press the last one to see what it does. Okay, Seth comes running over, presses the last button, and you see that middle chamber shake violently as flames lick up the sides of the cocoon. It bursts open, spewing forth poisonous gas. Whoa. And now... Sometimes I feel like you want everyone to hate me. I don't know. You make the choices, man. I come up with this shit before the game. And technically, oh, these guys are back here. You guys are doing much better. There was a chance that you got sucked inward by the fan and then trapped with the beholder. So all things considered, not bad. But Scott. actually, I, I have a, I do have a question. When yes. the fan was still going, did the beholder seem like it was phased by the wind at all, or was it like holding its own? It was holding its own. It was okay. just sort of stuck there. I, I was gonna say, I was kind of curious to see if we could just like make a wind tunnel and have it sucked into the fan. Probably could have. If you maybe added your own gust to the wind tunnel, or if someone shoved it, I'd probably give it like double movement on a shove. Okay. Not to theory craft too much, but I mean, it is out of your hair for the time being. Okay. What hair? Ah. Oh. Ah. <laughs> oh. All right, uh, Seth, you have you have done this, and the the smoke slash billowy poisonous gas has clung to the area, and it's filling it like a cube, but it's not spilling forth onto the party or back. Uh, however, there are those smoldering corpses in the mix. There, you're not sure if this gas will ignite in flame or not, but it doesn't appear to be. Okay. Um, I guess that will 
be my turn then. Okay. All right. Uh, Kevin. And I, and I disappear. <laughs> and Rodora <laughs> pushes a button. All right. Kevin, it's your turn. Oh, I'm stop. thoroughly confused. Um, well, so directly in front of you, poisonous gas is hovering. Yeah, I don't like that. And a big cube. Uh, beyond that, there is a platform of fire. And beyond that, there's a pool of blood. And then against the wall at the far end is a big, big fan. Yep. Kevin doesn't like any of that. <laughs> he doesn't want to go towards any of it. Um, and all the buttons have been pushed puzzle. at this point. Uh-huh. But you know what they do now. None of them feel good. <laughs> None of them seem like they're good things. Nope, I did not make this puzzle with a solution in mind, just a <laughs> varying degree of how good or bad it goes. So far, you guys are doing pretty good, to be honest. Kevin will uh, just try to position himself, I guess, in front of the rest of the party in case the beholder pops back up. <clears throat> okay. This Can I ask a, a clarifying question? Sure. So e each one of these cylinders that are rotating, do they each only have one chamber that goes through, or do they have multiple chambers? Only one chamber. So when you were on A, ah, okay. or at least to the yep. best of your knowledge, it was just wall until you rotated it. back around. Now, okay. you can assume that there's also another chamber for A, but uh, your party has seen it come and go, and it's empty. Okay. Uh, but yes, Kevin. You, I mean, you can you can get up. You're up in the forefront with yeah. technically with Seth, who is not there actually. I want to try to provide just at least at least cover for the rest of the party while they mm -hmm. figure out what's going on. Mm -hmm. That's it. that's all I can really do. Yeah. Okay. All right, Drea. Is there anything you would like to do? And you guys are welcome to act as though you're not in combat and have like a discussion with one another. I'm not going to restrict that. Okay. Um, can I walk forward and just sort of poke a finger into this? It's it's just like a stationary gas, right? Yeah, it's it's hanging like a thick, strange fog. Okay, I'll just poke a finger into it just to see. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it just walks yeah, forward finger and falls off. <laughs> sticks a finger into the gas. Um, <laughs> make a Constitution saving throw. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know. Give it 20. Unnatural. 20? Okay. Uh, you take... Where is it? Where? Uh, seven acid damage. As it, like, clings and forms to your glove and burns right through into your hand. Hmm... We might want to get suits before we go into this really weird stuff. It's sticky and it hurts and stings. Hmm. Um, okay. Which one of the buttons... Was it the top left button that was for our chamber? I think that was the first one. Yes, yes it was. Okay. Guys, I think what we should try is move ourselves out of the way so the fan won't blow us and then throw the fan in reverse and get rid of some of this poisonous fog. Oh, see, built on the plan I had. Got it perfect, Ren. I like it. the same switch? thing and I blink back out again. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but how do we move the switch without being sucked in ourselves? Uh, if we rotate rotate our own chamber a little bit so that we're not in line. How? The control is in your chamber. Yeah. There's no, there's no switch to move our chamber. There is. The top left one is for our chamber. Is yeah. it? Yeah, you guys used it earlier. I used it. Uh, Doc, you stop do us. the honors? Of course. I kind of like press the button to get us to rotate out of view. Okay. The chamber moves, and you, you rotate out of view. Then 
can I press again or direct somebody else to? Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll say this is out of initiative if you guys want, if you have a plan. Okay, so I'll press it now we're out of view. Yeah, yeah, you've, you've moved out. Okay, Get everybody, uh, be right, I'm going to throw the fan and we'll let that air out for a bit. Now the fun part. Okay. So I push the switch in the opposite direction that we initially had it to hopefully suck the poisonous gas out of that room. Okay. How long do you let the fan run? Uh, can we say a minute? Sure, a full minute. Uh, it sounded like a bad idea. Oh. Do it, do it, I, do it, do it. We're going to attack by the beholder like 10 times <laughs> over. So, <laughs> pro- no, no, no. probably not good. But a full minute just means certain things have happened. Uh, like this. Everybody really good just... with the. F- <laughs> The <laughs> blacked Ghost out on black. purpose, right? That was yes. Just, yeah. yes, 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 that was on purpose. Oh god. So we go for a full minute, guys. Yes, no. Yeah. Was... All right, full minute. Yeah. <laughs> you throw it in reverse, and elevator music plays. <laughs> and reverse it. Thanks, Miss Elliot. All right. You've let oh. the switch roll for a minute. Is the fire still there, too, as well? Hmm. I'd say maybe not, but... (laughs) (laughs) That's not going to... It's still there. (laughs) It's it's technically... Well, I can't say. When you guys get to it, you can inspect the fire. However, the gas does appear to be gone. Have you pushed the button and rotated back into view? Yeah. uh, Stop us in place again. Okay. Very good. I'm going to switch the music back. Yeah! (laughs) <laughs> I feel like it, it's, it's, it's very reminiscent of some of the music in The Witcher 3. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's combat music for sure. Mm-hmm. So I'm that's down with it. That's level up music. <laughs> Three more sessions now. But no, you guys are leveling up soon, but... Yes. Not mid-session. Just <laughs> yes, mid-session. I want to torture myself. <laughs> All right, so you've rotated back up. You see that the poisonous gas has gone somewhere. You see that the corpses are now all on fire in that pool of blood at the far end. And they are sort of wedged up against the fan. And it looks like chunks of them might have disappeared back through the grate and gotten gummed up in the fan. Mm -hmm. So technically they're kind of like held up. Okay. So I don't want to get separated again. Let's stay together as we go forward. Okay. Is is the fan non running now? It is not running. You turned it off, I assumed. Yeah. Uh, Well, yeah, I was about to say we should probably throw it in neutral just in case. Yeah. Um, Can we stop the third platform so it's got just a straight shot now through to the fan? Yeah, yeah, you've already stopped the third. Okay. It's just that burn that's the fire. Okay. Well, let's go into the second chamber at least and see what's afoot. Okay. Party moves forward into the next chamber. Fire burns blue and red and orange. It's all three. It's magical. So the fire's still still ablaze in front of us? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> can I poke it? <laughs> yes, you can. I mean, everything. someone quick and stop me. Yep, looks like fire. It's, <laughs> it's, it's warm, Ash, as you reach forward. <laughs> can, I just, can I just... No one, if no one stops you, yeah, you can stick your hand right in it. Dre, right, what are you doing? It's... it's... Clearly fire. I know it doesn't hurt you as much, but it would be hilarious if it was an illusion. <laughs> Come on, Dre. I know you're smarter than this. Yeah, it's yeah. Fire. It doesn't hurt that bad. You guys are just little wussies. You don't need to make a check. You can wave your hand through it. It is clearly fire. Though. It's, it's, <laughs> it's real. Clearly fire. Okay. I am not trying. Please, dear God, <laughs> listen when I tell you. <laughs> um, can I look down at the base and see if there's like maybe something supplying the fire since it didn't go out with the big fan. Make an investigation check. Uh, 
four. Hmm. The fire is mesmerizing. <laughs> <laughs> it's really distracting you from from seeing into and around the bed of charred flame that's obscuring your view of the source. Lord Treya goes down to look at and just sort of... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Stops from putting her hands in and leans her face closer. <laughs> Anyone? Bueller? Uh, do you think? You, you know this place. What might be causing this? This could be some electrical short or... That's my best guess. Maybe a, a leaking accelerant somewhere. Um, Do you think we should rotate the platform back and just take on the butt holder? Maybe ready actions? Um, actually, where did he go? I thought there was only one chamber per per thing. He hmm. was on. He was on this this chamber. It was rotated. Okay. So, so he may have. He may have been fanned. Probably not, because he was unaffected by the fan earlier. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. He is the fire, guys. He is the fan, too. Let me take a look from the other side. Um, can I use Misty Step to get to the other side? Uh, what's the range on that? Like 30 feet. I'll double check for you. Well, this is 20 feet. Each square is five feet. So just let me know where you'd like to land. Yeah, it's 30 feet. Of these eight squares, I assume. Um, bottom two squares away. So one more forward. This yeah. One. Yeah. Okay. What do I see from, from this side? Um, make an investigation check. Uh, I rolled a 15. Okay. You do, in fact, see that there are frayed wires sticking out of the base of the sort of the revolution system, and they are supplying the, the sparks. And for some reason, whatever they are igniting on the paneling on the floor, it's just not going out there. They're just continually supplying that electricity. Okay. Let me just yell out, like, there's some uh, loose wires over here. It's causing the fire. I don't know what to do. Hmm. I'm uncertain. I'm a bear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a magician, not an electrician. What's an electrician? electrician. <laughs> hmm. Is there some way that you can interact with the wires, Ren? Uh, they look dangerous to me, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're. There could potentially be some paneling on the wall that you could you could try and pry off. Okay, is that that's kind of where the wires are coming from, like some panel on the side? Yeah, just just low to the ground paneling in the wall. I mean, okay, you could, you could go around the the hall basically and get to a spot that's not on fire. Got it. Uh, yeah, I'll look around and see if there's a panel nearby. Okay, so you you can I mean it's just wall paneling. You can pry some off. Okay. And there are a series of wires within. Uh, how to uh, how to stop electricity? Mm -hmm. Googling. Okay, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, My God's name is Google, and he tells. Me. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, Pokemon type speeds electricity, guys? <laughs> Weakness. Mm. Ground. Kick Geo dirt on dude. It. Throw some Dig dirt it. on it, yeah. guy. <laughs> <laughs> Who brought their pocket sand? Clefairy. <laughs> pocket um, sand. Ren, you do see four wires. 
Four wires? Okay. Yep. Can I just, uh, can I try a ray of frost on them? On the wires? Yeah, just on the whole... Uh, I see fire and I think, well, let me just cool it down with some frosty spell. Okay. Yeah, you fire some rays of frost you into it. Dunk some milkshakes on it. And... Yeah. <laughs> um, hmm. Okay. It's frosty fire now. <laughs> <laughs> um... Radioactive steam is produced. That's why it's yeah. blue. Ren, do you need me to shoot lightning at anything? <laughs> <laughs> no lightning, not yeah. yet. <laughs> Fock and Drea, I would like perception checks. Red dice or black dice? This is getting too complicated. Just roll. <laughs> You said perception? Hey. Yes. I see nothing. Shit in the black. Flat or regular? Uh, Just a d20 plus your wisdom. Okay, I thought you said flat for some reason. Um, 19. Uh, Okay. Uh, Drea, you note that the fires have dimmed, dulled, and then begin to dissipate. And you hear the sort of like the the creaking of frost reaching up the control console behind you um uh we should probably uh is there an exit over there Ryan? uh do i see anything any path yeah so you're at a t you have an intersection where you could go left or right they're basically uh, mirrored halls uh but okay. one to your right if you're looking at the fan does end with a door and the, the one to your left has an abrupt turn that leads into darkness. Okay. Yeah, I'll come quickly this way. Yeah, we should go. The fire is going, but the thing behind us is creaking. I think it's your eyes thing. <laughs> go, 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 go. All right. Yep. <laughs> Can we just... The party rushes forward? Yeah. 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 Okay. If it's dissipated enough. Okay. With reckless okay. abandon. Very good. All right, I am stopping the chair, Ben. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you all come to a halt in basically at, at the front. You run, you race through the chamber that's the floor is very warm. The fire has disappeared. Uh, Ren, your handiwork does appear to not last for long as you know, it's just a cantrip. The, the ice fades, the electricity resumes, the fire returns. Okay. That's fine. You see, we're, we're you see some, some sparks coming from the console. You're not sure what that may or may not have resulted in. Okay. Well done, Run. That got us through. Cool. Thanks. Uh, looks like we have a split here, and I'm not about to touch those corpses either. We've got a door over there, and I don't know what's around this corner over here. I can read the descriptions if you would like. Yes, please. <laughs> All right. So, to your left, a clinically cold stretch of hallway leads to a to the left, ending in an abrupt turn. Uh, beyond that, if you should travel this direction, would anyone like to peek their head over? I'll take a look. Okay. Thok, you uh, walk maybe 40 feet down this hallway. There, Everything's very long and narrow. <laughs> You peek over and you see shadows clinging to something near the floor on the wall and a muffled whisper speaks, but you can't quite hear it from where you are. It's right next to a door, uh, a very large door with like a, a lever pull that you could slide all the way around. Well, there's a strange whispering sound coming from here, everyone. Um, I don't know if I like it or not. What's the whisper speaking in? Thok, you recognize it to possibly be Gnomish? Mm, probably Gnomish. You've heard a, a couple Gnomish sounds lately. Yeah. Okay. Why don't we see if there's anything behind the other door first and make our decision then. Okay. okay. So, who wants to head down the other hallway? I'll do it. All right. Drea takes off in the other direction. Bear in mind, if you go this way, are you trying to jump over the blood? 
Or are you walking I mean, through the blood? I'm not trying to get dirty. I know. That's, I'm asking. Are you um, jumping? Is, can we walk around the blood? Mm -hmm. <laughs> How I mean, deep it's, it's... is it? Oh, How is deep it? is your blood? <laughs> Oh. Bryce Lewis, cult <laughs> classic. Uh, it's like, I don't know, a couple centimeters. It's not like it's not like you're it's wading through. It's not a pool it's of just... blood. It's a puddle of blood. Yeah, it's a puddle. Puddle. But it's pooled outward. As she's heading towards the door, I'm gonna kind of just reconvene with the party. Okay. Uh, it's just an I'll athletics be... check. I'll 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 just. Uh, uh, or you can just walk through it. it. It's the way you say things. I don't trust I, I even wanna... a little bit. <laughs> oh, look, Are the you sure you back, and now he, blood? he apparently is drawn to blood, and now he, his attacks are <laughs> ten times more potent. Uh, fifteen. Fifteen? Okay. Uh, so that's ten of your movement in a turn, and Dre, you do manage to jump the full ten feet. Can and I knock on the door? Yeah, you can. You can continue down the hallway. Bear in mind, it is. Uh. 40 feet as well just like the other one and you come to the end you can look down the left of the hallway and it becomes immensely dark it's definitely just a straight shot but it's like looking into a black hole it just goes dark uh, but the the big oak door before you you are most certainly welcome to knock on manners first I guess I'll go uh... yeah Soft, hard, ten times, twice. Tentative and twice. Okay. There is no, there is no reply. Can I do it again a little bit louder, but three times? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's still no reply. At this point, I'm asking you guys weird questions just to, <laughs> just to do it. <laughs> what type of knock? <laughs> um. Let's all open the door. Okay, you reach down, you pull the door open. Creak. <laughs> Creak. All right. The door opens into a 30 by 30 square chamber, mm -hmm. a wooden paneled floor, at the center of which there stands a large stone golem. Close the door, close the door. Andrea closes the door. <laughs> There's a big man in there. I don't think we should go that way. Is there another way well, to go? <laughs> that's a big man or strange gnomish whispers. There is a uh, sign on the wall next to the door, Dre, but it's in gnomish. Bren, can you read this? Yeah, on my way. All right, Bren runs over. You stop before the blood. Do you walk through the blood? Yeah, I walk through the blood. Okay. Because it just it looks like just blood to me. Okay, yeah, you walk through the blood, it sticks to your boots, and you leave little footprints behind yourself. Okay, uh, what's on the sign? It says Armory. Armory? Oh. Hey, I've been looking for this. Mm -hmm. did I know. I, did what I is see it run? anything in it while I had the door open? Mm -hmm. Besides the golem? Mm -hmm. I think this is the armory, at least by this sign. I come right over. <laughs> but wait, 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 I Thok. stand in front of the door. <laughs> Thok, do you walk through the blood? Uh, I'll jump over it. Okay, athletics check, please. Uh, Dre, you did see there's a port case leading deeper into the left, like a 10-foot wide iron gate, but it was it was shut down. Uh, 15. 15? Okay, you, you make a 10-foot hop. Pretty impressive mm. standing broad jump right there. I mean, we do yeah, have... ten foot jump is. Yeah. Ashley, what'd you say? I said we have three directions to go now. Mm -hmm. Dre, you open the door. What did you see in there? Nothing but a stone man, and that was it. Well, I know that the GCMC has many defenses. Part of this place seems on automatic defense already. But I would like to get in that armory. It may help prepare us. Even with those defenses activated? 
Well... It's the armory, it's got to have some kind of precautions. I, I don't... This all seems like a very bad idea, considering there were no weapons in there. Seth, do you still have Blink on? Uh, I, I don't, but I could throw it back on. I wonder if you could go sneak around and find a control panel or something in there. Oh, but that's actually in between turns, right? So it doesn't actually let you be yeah. invisible. Well, I was able to sneak around an armored scorpion with just darkness. I could do the same. True. I wonder if perhaps there might be some way to shut the defenses off from the outside of the armory if we go around. Hmm. Okay. Did you see any other doors in the room, or was it just the golem and nothing else? I see anything else. <laughs> that that portcullis uh, oh, okay. in and to uh, the left. There was definitely like a deeper chamber. Uh, okay. There is a way around, but it's very dark and deep, and you have to go through the dead. Yeah. Dark. The golem may be deactivated too. It wasn't moving, was it? Oh no, I didn't step in and see if it was. Whoa. Let's have a peek. Dark and deep's my middle name. I can go in first. Bookworm pushes you from behind. <laughs> All right, Seth. Yeah. If you need anything, you call out, okay? Oh dear God, this is exciting. very good. Is is the room just normal dark or is it magical dark? Have you opened the door yet? Yes. Okay, so you're standing there with the door open. Yes. It appears to just be normal darkness. You can see everything. Okay. Be mindful, there could be pressure plates and things of the like in here. I've heard of such trappings in my travels. Okay. Thanks for the tip, friend. <laughs> Let's not get too chummy. Um, so... It's- the rooms is empty and it's just a golem, and it's not moving. Correct. Okay. I will use two sorcery points. I will cast darkness so I can see, and no one else can. Mm -hmm. And before I go in, I'll say, if anything bad happens, you'll hear me scream. <laughs> this is just Seth's life now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, playing a rogue. Okay, yeah, Seth, so you, you chant the darkness rushes out of you? How to describe that for me? Uh, yeah, so the medallion that I got from my now dead mom just kind of starts to vibrate, you know, usual business. Darkness okay. spills out in a 20 foot radius. And I look at my party with my unblinking eyes and just kind of back into it like a creep. Okay, very good. You do that. And, um, but I'm going to move cautiously. So I move like five feet in, turn around. <laughs> And okay. Can I, I, wish, like a, I wish I'd put a trap right on that first square so you walked backwards into it. Dude, yeah, I'm telling you, you won't be dead. <laughs> no! If if I did, I would have retconned my prep and said that you walked over something. <laughs> you are safe in the chamber. Alright. In the dark. Uh, so it's, it's... It's the golem and nothing else. I mean that you can see. So there there is wooden panel, paneling floor. The okay. portcullis to the left, which you can't see through. Um, although that chamber is also dark. If you do peer through the portcullis, you see that there is another chamber very similar to this one, also with a different kind of golem within it. Okay. Um, what are you attempting to do? Are you... I'm just kind of getting like a lay of the land while also trying to not be detected and smushed. If you would like to check for... for traps and or secret things you can just make a perception check but you will have disadvantage because there's no source of light because it's like an investigation check okay um yeah i'll do that i'll check for okay. traps and secrets cool stuff okay. disadvantage i mean if you get rid of the darkness and light a torch you'll have just a normal check Great. Uh, seven. All right. You don't find anything out of the ordinary. 
But you're certain there has to be a way to open this port call us. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll uh, sneak back around. I'll pop my head out in the darkness. Everything seems peachy keen. The golem hasn't moved, but the port colas seems to be locked. Hmm. Okay. Empty chamber otherwise? Empty chamber. Did you walk the length of it, Scott? Like, did you... Did you... Like, did you just walk in five feet and then, like, look with your eyes? Did you walk around the chamber? Um... I probably just went to the portcullis because I guess that was probably all okay. I saw. But then, okay. you know, my weak perception, I'd probably pass that. Okay. Yeah. Um, would you like me to keep investigating? Take a turn around the whole room if you can. Very good, friend. And I just disappear back into the darkness. <laughs> all right. So you're just walking the whole the whole chamber. Yeah, yeah, but also not trying to trigger the golem, if possible. I mean, you're blind walking, you failed your perception check. You do walk to the top right of the chamber, and you feel, as you take that last step, the wooden panel sinks into the ground, and you hear the great <laughs> of the portcullis go up. Okay. Mm. Um, just for the uh, just for the record, too, because I cast it with two sorcery points, I can see in the darkness. I don't know if that makes a difference. Correct. That's why I allowed you to even make a check. Okay. That's right. the, so everyone heard the port call scope. You see it go up, but no right. one else can. Gotcha. Um, I guess I'll carefully make my way through the port holes into the other room. As soon as you step off the pressure plate, it closes. Um, so what is that noise? Zelda as a kid. I'll remember which pressure plate it was. I'll peek my head back out. My eyes. I found the plate to open the portcullis, but it's a pressure plate. Someone or something has to stay on it. Well, why don't you drop that darkness and I'll come in. As you wish. And I'll just drop it. Mm -hmm. I'll follow. Okay. Um, when I stepped on the plate, did it seem like it took a lot of weight to, op like, to open it? It took your full body weight. My full like body weight? Yeah, it's... I mean, Ren might not even be able to hold it down. Or uh, mm. Kevin can because he's a bear, but. I'm a right. bear. <laughs> no, I wasn't sure if I could like, take something out of my. Uh, out of my, like, inventory. Because I still got, like, a sack of water. Yeah, no, it's, it's not like Indiana Jones where you're going to be able oh. to. Okay. Uh, but I mean, there are other things in this place that I'm sure you could find and. Uh, <laughs> weigh it down with. Push the golem over to it. Yeah, I was just I was thinking the same thing actually. Oh yeah. Uh, I'm gonna use a light cantrip to shed some light in this place. Gave froze. Gave you froze. Oh no. No 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 no. There he is. No. <laughs> hey. <laughs> what are you gonna do? My wire got my wire got caught and I went dunk. Yeah. <laughs> so I just keep going anyway. Uh I will cast a light cantrip so we can all see. Uh what are you casting that on? Uh the ceiling, but not directly over the golem. Okay. Just so it kind of goes maze. Just, yeah, it's just stone. Uh the, the chamber looks like a normal chamber. Okay. I know we saw um, a sign outside. As I look around, is there any more gnomish writing on the walls? Mm -mm. Okay. All right. Uh, Seth, what did you say about uh, that uh, switch over there? There's a pressure plate that opens the four colors into the next room. However, one person must be left behind. Because it takes mm. the full body weight of someone to open it. What okay. if I brought one of those bodies over from the other room? Actually, a very good idea. Buddy. Can I, um... <laughs> can I look, like, at the face of the stone golem without touching it? Just kind of like, uh... Like, yes. does this look like a statue of a stone golem? Or like, a you Anything know, I've ever seen before? Ren, it did at first. And then you got close to it. 
And you looked up and you realize that's not all stone. Some of it is flesh. Some of it is wiring. And when you get close and the light shines down on it, you see like ligaments tense as the jaw clenches. Uh, okay. But otherwise, move away. it makes no move. Okay. Okay. Um, hey, that's not stone. There's some kind of flesh underneath there. And it's not moving, but this looks like some of the same... Well, actually, I don't know if it, if it looks like the same stuff we've been seeing, the organic, inorganic mix. Uh, kind of look like the same as the scorpion that almost killed me. It does not, okay. but it is definitely reminiscent of it. It's, I would say it would be like looking at an older version of something, like like an older Mac, like the Mac you got three generations ago versus mm-hmm. the first one. Okay. Like the, the CRT with the blue bubble on the back. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, nobody touch it. Just let it be. Um, and I'll be back in a second. Okay. Uh, walk out and try to look at the bodies and judge which one seems to be the heaviest and grab that. <laughs> okay. So you you walk through the puddle of blood. You stand there for a minute. You look at the four corpses that are just like half dredged into the grate. Some of the, the rotted, burnt, charred flesh has been pulled back in. They're basically skeletons. You think you could probably grab like two of them and maybe maybe a third would equal a human's weight. They've been pretty stripped bare of mm-hmm. most things. But I'll try to grab these three of them. Okay. Fuck. Uh, you want to describe for me how? Because these, like, I can these are too. Kevin can can assist Doc. As a bear. Yeah. I just want you guys to describe how you do this, yeah. please. So like, I grab it by like, the torso, try to like, pull it out of the grate. <laughs> okay. And then I like load it onto Kevin's back, I'm like ah, a good pack mule you make sometimes. And I grab the next one, repeat the process. Okay. As you're doing so, you realize it's like like meat that's been left on the barbecue too long. It's like you rip chunks out and like the bones like <laughs> pop right Ooh. out. Mm-hmm. Class. That's never happened with me in the barbecue before. <laughs> <laughs> you should start barbecuing with electrical fire. True. <laughs> um, um, go ahead, Dre. No, good. Finish your description. I want to do something after. Okay, so but you do you pull a bunch of the corpses off. It's really just bits and pieces, but you can kind of like smush them into a nice little pile of charred flesh. Okay, nice little okay. pile of charred of charred well, flesh. Let's let's go back into the room and we'll put this on that step. Okay. Drea, did you have something? No, let them do the thing. Okay, this must be a new experience for Kevin. <laughs> Not as new as you might think. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. All right, Seth. Where is the the step? It's this one. It's the funny looking one. Okay, Ooh. you can identify as long as Seth. You aren't trying to mislead him. No. Okay, well, I'll grab the pile of corpses and just place it on there. Okay, it does sink down, and then the portcullis comes up. There we have it. Is Ren, what are you doing? Uh, I backed away from the stone, not stone golem, mm-hmm. and I just kind of want to scan and see if if this is basically just seems like some kind of waiting chamber, or uh, if the portcullis is the only way forward, basically, or the only other thing of interest in this room. It certainly appears to be that uh, the case. Um, okay. It, it looks like it's like a multi-tiered security clearance chamber. Like they would check people through a few antechambers before you get into the the goods. Okay. Uh, well, I'm gonna go towards the portcullis, but I've got one eye on the stone, not stone golem. Okay. You do make a perception check. 
That's good. Uh, 19. Okay. You note that there is a flicker of light. Red light from within the eyes. Okay. Um, I'm not sure how deactivated that stone golem is between the sinews I saw in its jaw and some light in its eyes. I'm not sure what's controlling it being on or off, but it's it's on, at least. Hmm, I wonder if it has to do with the pressure plate being activated. Hmm. Can I take the corpses off the pressure plate? Sure. The portal slams shut. The eyes dim. Got it. <sighs> got it, got it. Whoa. Fuck. Uh, good observation. Red, I, you could teleport. Do you think you could stand on the pressure plate just long enough with one of these corpses to get it to open and then teleport in with the rest of us? Um, I might well, have the- to add some weight. The problem is that we'd be locked in there. Unless we reverse the process. That or maybe this goes to an exit. I think being an armory, they'd want only one entrance in or out. Hmm. Drea, you said you had something? Uh, yes, I have two swords, one that is nearly as tall as me and made entirely of metals and stone. Uh, perhaps I leave two swords on, and we leave just enough weight on the body. I can, I suppose, recall my swords if we need it shut. But for now, leave them unless the golem becomes an issue, in which case we are just left in. Locked in. I think that sounds like a good plan. I could also summon my dog Balthazar. I don't know if he'll be heavy enough, but he can move through objects. So die with us. Unless it specifies he's like made of shadow. But I, I think so. But he's just actually it up. made of solid mass. He's 500 pounds. No, I mean um, if it, it is a big, big. It's a medium-sized wolf. It's yeah. It's it's considered medium. Um, I'll let you know if it's like made of yeah. shadows or not. Though. As long as it doesn't say it's made of shadow, I'll, that's that's cool with me. All right. Okay. <laughs> Those are both good ideas. Mm-hmm. I'm up to either one you have. We could summon a bear pile, but I don't know if Gabe would get mad at me again. <laughs> Not <laughs> bear pile! That's typically just frustrating for combats where suddenly we're rolling for twice as many things. Well, you never know. It might soon become a combat. <laughs> no uh. comment. <laughs> Alright, Seth, what you got? Um... It says it's, I can call forth the howling creature of darkness. It doesn't say it's made of shadows, but considering the fact that it can move through objects, I'm assuming it is. Yeah, so, yeah if he can like move through stuff, he's probably yeah. made of darkness. Yeah, I mean, the only other thing is it says it takes it takes the dire wolf statistics, but I'm, I won't really fight probably. you with mass because it's just... Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, right. and Kevin, Kevin can summon a bunch of stuff. It's I could do that. I will, if that's what the group wants. It's up to you guys. Let's try it. Yeah. Kevin yeah. will drop his bear form and just turn back into a gnome. And then I will summon four black bears. Okay. And have have one of them. I'll pat him on the head and say, can you sit there, please? The bear <laughs> waddles over. and oh, it quickly holds up. open. Let us move into the portcullis. Portcullis yeah, comes up. I'm going in. And I'll okay, say, everyone. you three with me. Okay. Uh, everyone moves into the next chamber. The room is very similar. However, this golem in the center appears to be made of polished gray stone. 
the chamber is almost identical. There is another port cultist at the far end. Okay. I try to hunt down a similar pressure plate, but not stand on it yet. Yes. Uh, in fact, you find one in the same position of this room as well. Okay. Can I take a close look at the polished stone golem? Yes. Uh, make an investigation check this time, however, Ren. Oh gosh. That's uh, 15. Okay. You do note this time that you can see veins. At first you thought they were just like imperfections in the granite or stone, whatever it's made of, that polished material. But the closer you get and look, you realize sometimes it's like the bulge of a wire or perhaps the tenuous strand of a vein that pumps with blood. Okay. Is anything happening to the golem in the previous room? Mm-mm. Ah, uh, guys, this, this looks like it's alive as well. Well, maybe we shouldn't sit on the pressure plate immediately, figure out what to do, maybe find some vulnerabilities, maybe tinker with it, see if we can find a battery, a heart. I say let's get out of here. Let's go forward into the next chamber. I agree. Okay. I'll direct a second bear. <laughs> okay, the second bear comes and sits down. This one's for you. Okay. The portcullis comes up. The gray golem's eyes shimmer silver. Quick, let's get into the next room and then get the bear off. All right, you rush into the next chamber to be met this time with another With combat time. music! <laughs> no. All right. The armory opens. Uh, da, ba, ba, da, ba, ba. I read that already. Finally, a third chamber looks nearly identical to the first two. However, at the far end, there appears to be a large industrial cabinet sunken into the wall, but there is no opening. It's all just sealed shut. It's like the wood is just planes that graft right into the, the stonework around it. Hmm. This well, time the golem is made of iron and bears a sword and a hammer. Its visor is down. Oh, no. Well, Ren, do you look at the other two? Does it seem to be similar or it seems that it's alive? What's it holding? Do you say a sword and what else? A hammer. A hammer. Hmm. Okay, um, I'll take a look at it. Okay. Investigation. Uh, it's a five. Five. Mm. The uh, the iron's very rusted. It's like painted. It's very hard to make out what's going on beneath the surface of this creation. Okay. All I can tell is it's made of a different material. This one's iron. Hmm. Curious. And you said it's just the golem and like some sealed door, right? Yep. V okay. Identical chamber. Well, so from the far wall just being, it looks like it's some sort of industrial cabinetry that's magically sealed. Well, Seth, you found the pressure plates in the other room. Do you want to check to see if this one's in the same place? Of course, friend. Anything for you? Anything for the party? I'll right. check for a similar pressure plate. Looks like oh, there's another one. It. Okay. Kevin directs bear number three. All right. Come on, bear buddy. Number but, three. But before the bear goes on the pressure plate, I think we should ready action because there's no escape from here. Hmm. Perhaps we should just grab what we can and run. I mean, once this pressure plate goes maybe it opens maybe it doesn't but the golem comes on listen i've seen death multiple times i'm just <laughs> being cautious looking out for my friends i saw that eye roll N not appreciated uh, already a can <laughs> yeah already want to already a fireball just in case Kevin will eat a uh, handful of what? berries. You get, I mean, you guys are welcome to tell me what you're... You have to be, like, pretty specific. I ready my cantrip to attack anyone who comes through the door, or... Assume if, for whatever reason, 
the golem gets up and starts swinging that sword and hammer. I'm firing one off. Okay. Um. Okay. So, hang on, hang on. Can I walk up to the golem and see if I can take the sword and hammer? Uh, yeah, you can. I mean, you can try, but it, it looks like it's a fix. Like it's a part of the golem. Like its its hand is the sword, basically. Are you touching? Mm-hmm. I mean, initially, probably. If it's part of it, then no. Um, okay. Do you guys think we could disarm it first? Like, I, I, yeah. We'd have to actually take its arm off, it seems, to disarm it. But if that doesn't trigger it, I don't know what would. <laughs> so, well, maybe there's a way of just dismantling. We don't have to disarm it, but maybe we can somehow get in the gears and sever the arms. So disarm it? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Thanks. Thanks, Kevin. (laughs) Well, if the other two didn't attack when we stood on the pressure plates, maybe this one will not as well. Everything has been nearly identical with the exception of just the makeup of these. No, there's some power source in here. There's some life in these. Um, it, it, if I go around the back side, is there any kind of control panel or Mm-mm. something? All right. Can I watch the door that we came through, the portcullis? I'll, like, walk all the way back to the first initial chamber? No, or I just, just want to watch the, the portcullis that we are currently in to and look down if, just to see if anything's see moving if, yeah. towards us, possibly. You do see some flickering red light from its eyes. Hmm. And the flickering silver light from the second golem's eyes. But they haven't moved anywhere? No. Because the rule of three, we gotta activate the third one before they all attack us at once. That's that's just science. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. You ready? Um, if the golem comes to life when we step on the third pressure plate, I'll attack it. Well, if it's an attack ready. So if it takes a step or takes a swing, I answer in turn. Okay. That is reasonable. Kevin? Kevin just gets ready to pat the bear and have him sit down. Okay. Would you guys like me to have the other bears stand up if they all come to life on the third? That might That's a good idea. Wise. That way, we only have one to deal with each time. Okay. Good, good idea, Kevin. I like it. Okay. And Kevin walks back over to the door and says, Listen up! These things wake up! You you don't sit on the button for a bit. Okay. Alright. Oh boy. I ate a handful of berries, by the way, because I... That, that death ray didn't feel too good earlier. Okay. As long as you're tracking your spells. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nervous berry muncher. Yeah. More like a okay. This is because one fills you up for a day. So Kevin. I was gonna like, say consider. I was just incre- that thought, like, <laughs> incredibly. It's a day's worth of rations, so I imagine like they're like this size. It's very <laughs> uncomfortable right now. Oh, I feel less okay. bad though. Okay. Okay. Kevin's bear moves, pads rather, toward the pressure plate. And eventually it tentatively puts a paw on it and then sits, sinking down into the floor. And you hear a distant clinking of mechanical gears and such in the far wall turning. And the eyes turn a rusty orange but nothing happened. Okay. You, I'd like you all to make perception checks. Okay. Nice. Hey. Hey is right. 16. 21. 18, 16, 21. Crit fail. Andrea? Had to be one. I think you're muted. (laughs) Fifteen. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> I like the gremlin voice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I should r- remind you that uh, Bookworm is also with you at the, as a party. He's probably just sick to Drea. Okay. Um, so those of you that got 15 or higher, which is everyone but Seth, you all collectively look over to see that there is a bright red light now in the first chamber. And the golem right. takes a step forward. <gasps> the first chamber does? The things that are moving? Just in the first chamber, and it moves toward the bear and is going to engage the bear in a grapple check to okay. attempt to pull it off of the the pressure plate. But as you've mentioned, the bears will anyway yeah. move off the plate. Okay. And as soon as that bear walks off of the plate, that portcullis slams back down, the golem deactivates. And your portcullis also slams down into place, locking you into the room. Okay. But what about the one we're in? I would like you all to roll initiative. Oh my god, I rolled a one. Let's work together. Yeah, yeah. This was a trap designed to take advantage of people not working together. However, um, the golem does not come to life. Something else is happening. The beholder. No. No. His eye stalks come out of the the armory. (laughs) You wanted weapons, I kill you all. (coughs) Oh, I gotta put it in the chat. In the chat. I prefer the tilde at three, personally, <laughs> so 13. Hi, <laughs> Drea. Uh, no battle map for this, right? Uh, no, there will be. <laughs> you say there will be or there won't be? There will be. Um, if we would like, we could take a short break, five minute break. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, yeah. that's 8.45. Uh, Cool. I'll get your initiatives written and I'll get the battle map set up. All right. Let's do it. We will resume. Break. Welcome back to the part where the party dies. Now, um, Ben, would you like to bring up the. Or are you prepared to have a share? Yes, who's first? What's initiative order? Initiative first is Ren. Okie doke. Ready when you are. Okay. Golem. You know what? I can. Sorry if this screws you up, Ben. But for your sakes, and this way I can hide what's underneath. There. Okay. So the portcullises are just simply indicated by the the plain blocks because I don't have portcullises, um, and they are currently shut. I'll move them off if they open back up. And then there are bears in every chamber, but I don't have a million bear minis. Elemental so bears. I don't have a million elemental bear miniatures either. Uh, so unfortunately, we'll just have to theater of mind those guys. Just don't let me forget about them. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so Ren, it is your turn. And in the chamber, something has leaked out of the iron golem. <clears throat> and formed behind it. Oh no. In sort of a loose energy of magic. Okay. <laughs> what does it look like? Uh a cloud. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Looks like that. Alright. Like a, a wispy green boy. Okay. It's happening. And you, you are welcome to target it if you'd like. Oh. Okay. Uh, uh, er, er, er. How big is this chamber? You said 30 by 30? Yes. Okay. Who are the people closest to the golem right now? 
Uh, so you have Elemental Bear, Thok, Kevin, Ren, Drea, Bookworm, Scott, Seth. The Elemental Bear is the one closest to the golem? Uh, no, he's over here in the corner. Me. Blue boy. Oh, okay. Uh, Thok is probably closest to the golem right there. Okay. And then Kevin. Okay. Uh, all right. I'll just try hitting the the wispy stuff with magic missiles. Okay, sure. Fire off. Uh, just yeah. let me know how many or, or what damage this is. Uh, it's not okay. going to use the shield spell. So, all right. I'm going to shoot all three magic missiles at it. Um, okay. and I'll just report damage in a sec. Okay, that's fine. 10 damage, force. Okay. Uh, and then can I look to see if anything is happening with that um, c- cabinet behind? We heard some kind of mechanical machinations, but I don't know if we saw anything. Okay. Uh, uno momento. Um, the it does appear to still be moving. It's just actually it's it's halted since the pressure plate in the other room let up, but it did appear to be. A mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so all three pressure plates have to be down. Yeah. Okay. Um. And ten damage, correct? Yes. Okay. All right, you fire off the magic missiles, they soar across the room, and they do punch holes in the magical cloud. Okay. Um, all right, is that your turn? Uh, yes. Okay. Seth, it is your turn. It is? Uh, yeah, I think you had an 18, and I skipped you. No, I had a Oh, damn, I'm sorry, it's right next to the other one. You're a three. Yeah. It's a nice <laughs> old one. I should have put like a break in or something. Okay. Uh, Drea, it is your turn. Um, the final golem is still alive, right? It's animated. This golem has not moved yet. Something has leaked out of it. Uh, has you are. Yet? No, it has not moved. Even you are welcome to attack it if you'd like. Does it look sinister? Uh, certainly. I mean, it's got a machete for me. <laughs> the, the gooey thing? Uh, the this, this guy, right? Oh, this? Does the gooey the, thing look sinister? It has not attacked you yet. I would say it looks sinister because it's leaked out of the golem and you're trapped in there with it and Bryce has attacked it and punched holes through it with magical missiles. Ah. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Are you sure I can't put it in my own armor? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the armor anymore. Dre just keeps collecting Run, everything. Can I befriend <laughs> this? I am multitudes. No, we that's, are that's legion. Not what I'm thinking. <laughs> I don't want to be- befriend it. Um, <clears throat> I'm lonely. Ouch, why have you shot me? <laughs> <laughs> Can I just move, I don't know, 15-ish feet away from it, and... You're over here in the corner, so you're about as far away from it as you can be. No, I mean, move up towards it, but still 15 feet away. Or however much. Right there, probably. It's about 15 feet away. Can I move away from the golem? <laughs> you can use your full movement to go to this corner. Because again, it's 5, 10, 15, 20. So you have 10 feet left. Actually, it's okay. 25 if you're in that corner. 20 in this corner. Or in the middle. Each each square is 15 by 15. Gotcha. Okay. Um... Then I'll move halfway up that square, and uh, we're technically in an initiative. Can we investigate it, look at it, see what it's doing. The golem? What it is? No, the gooey. Ah, sure. Make a nature check. Twenty-one. 
17. Okay. It looks to have been some sort of emission from the golem. It does appear to have hostile elements to it. It looks very poisonous to you. And it is writhing and roll roiling like an angry, angry poisonous cloud boy. Okay. He <laughs> angry. Yeah. Uh, I move. That's uh You've moved twenty. You can still move into range, but uh you did use your action to inspect it. Yeah, that's fine. Uh then I'll take a step back, I guess, into okay. that back. And then chill. Okay. Ready to attack. Okie dokie. Alright. The cloud does something. It squirrels itself up like winding, like a little tornado, and then <laughs> sort of sprays this gas out into the chamber. Um, it's a 40 foot diameter sphere of fog, so it fills up the entire chamber. Oh. Uh, and I need constitution saving throws from everyone. Let's roll the dice. Ten. Twenty unnatural. Okay. Uh, twenty-five. Okay. Boys. Seventeen. Mm-hmm. Okay. The saving throw is a sixteen, so meets it, beats it. If you succeeded, you will take eleven damage, eleven poison damage. If you failed, you will take twenty-two poison damage. What was the DC again? 16. Jesus. Uh, and the the smoke does immediately begin to dispel after it sort of just did that little bleh. Um, and that will end its turn and brings to Thok. All right. I'll run up to the gas and... Try to attack it. Okay. You may do so. Okay. Uh, 25 to hit. Okay. That will hit. Uh-huh. Four. 11 piercing damage. Okay. I'll hit it again. With an unnatural 20 to hit. That'll hit. For nine piercing damage. Okay. All right. You have dealt some blows to it. Is that your turn? Yeah, as a guess, you can't really shove it prone or anything. So, yep. Okay. Uh, and did Kevin? Did you uh, succeed on your concentration check? Yes. I just took okay. Out. Uh. Well, I was gonna ask you. A, I was gonna ask you a question. Okay. Um, it's, it's your turn, but shoot now. What's the distance in between the chambers? Is from where from where we are at the port cutlass to the furthest chamber away? Is that more than sixty feet? Yes. This this chamber over here is more than sixty feet. So um, so so let me qualify 30, why I'm asking in. 40. And then another thirty, another ten, so another forty, so eighty. So in the event that I that I lose concentration on the bears, okay, that then they go, they're gone. Yeah, they would just dissipate. And so I can't re my range on that spell to conjure them is within sixty feet. And so I'm just checking to see if I do lose concentration or if I drop concentration intentionally. Yeah. We are stuck in here, Correct. at least by the way we okay so. That basically renders me useless, so I'm going to turn into a bear and attack. I have seven hit points. Okay. I can't do anything else. <laughs> okay. Kevin has turned into a, another bear, so this is your second use? Yep. Okay. Kevin turns into a bear and lunges forward. Make your attack rolls, Kevin. Mm. Let's go, bear boy. I got a seven and a six. This is the worst rolls I've ever had. Okay. Uh, were those the natural rolls? Nope. <laughs> okay. 
Wow. Kevin, unfortunately, your claws and maw do sink right through the the floating air, um, missing the creature. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to do, Kevin? Can't do anything else. That's it for me. Okay. Are you a bonus action heal or anything? I can't heal my actual self, right? I can only put back you health can, points you from can the... You heal yourself. As I can heal Kevin or I can heal the bear hit points? Yeah, I think so, because I think the bear hit points are temporary, but... Okay. If I if you'll let me do it, I'll do it. <laughs> I I would need to read read the the class rules, but yeah, I would love to to spend some spell slots to heal. I yeah, just don't okay. know exactly what I'm allowed to do. So. Okay. Yeah, just look it up and see. But I I think you can. Um, but if if you can't, if it does say specifically like you can only heal your your bear form, then just just let me know and okay. don't do it. But um. Okay, Seth, your turn. All right. Um, Mr. Green Sleeves over here. I Oops. will. Whoopsie daisies. Cast a firebolt at the gas. Okay. Make your spell attack, please. He six to hit. A six. 26 to hit? 26, yeah. Yes, that will hit. Uh, okay, there we go. I, you cut out and you said six to hit. I was like, uh, yeah. almost, I almost just said, no, that doesn't hit. <laughs> All right. For five fire damage. Okay. You have struck a blow against evil this day. Did you roll both dice? I got a one and a four. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, actually... Would you let me use two sorcery points to quicken it and then cast something else? Sure. Or... Okay. Yeah, I'll do that. Uh, so five, and then I will use um, Toll the Dead, so I need a Wisdom saving throw of 15. So you're just going to use Toll the Dead now? Yeah. Okay. Uh, eight. What's your DC? 15. Okay, he does fail. Okay. Those are the wrong. Let's see. Seth launches a firebolt forward, noticing that it doesn't do quite as much damage as he would like, so he quickens another cantrip and rings a bell. 18 necrotic damage. There you go. Oh. Okay. Creature's not looking great. Holes are appearing in its vacuous form. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Is that your turn, Kevin? So, or Seth? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Damn it! All right, uh, Ren, it is your turn again. Mm. Mm. All right. Okay. Nothing is really uh, the golems. Uh. I'll leave them be for the time being. Let me uh, use a ray of frost on the gaseous stuff. Okay. You are welcome to do so. Make your spell attack, please. Oh, sick. I rolled a 20. Nah, so that's, one? yeah. Double the dice. Okay. Fifteen damage. Okay. All right. You fire off a blast of ice into the midst of the creature. Now uh, you do see again its form begins to dissipate a little bit. It's like shredding away wisp by wisp. Is that your turn? Uh, yeah. I'm keeping a close eye and see if the golem in here is moving at all. Okay. All right. Um, Drea, it is your turn. Um, um, I'm going to move up towards it. Okay. Uh, just up as far as I can towards it. Sure. Um, using... Okay. Hmm... I'm 
Yeah, I'm going to use Sword Burst. Um... Okay. Uh, with the intention of your Sword Burst also hitting the goal? No, I'll keep it away from the golem for the time being. Okay, so you are flush against the wall, because I think it's five feet around you. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. And then is that a spell attack or a saving throw? A saving throw. Okay. Uh, what kind? Dex. Okay, it does fail. I rolled very low. Okay. Ooh. It's going to take... 11 some kind of damage slicey okay. damage okay. uh and i'm also gonna attack slicey it. damage slicey yeah. damage <laughs> slicey. okay mm, a what thing did i use for that i don't know it's like a 19 or... like a 19 i believe oh, a 19 will hit oh, okay it's higher yeah, yeah. 19 will hit. Uh, do, 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 do. uh, and that's an extra nine damage. Okay. And you have one more attack, if you'd like to make it. Yeah, sure. Okay. Wait, that's the wrong one. Rawr! Oops. Is that three attacks? I... Four magic. Yeah, can you oh, sick? I need to look it up. I believe you get both of your attacks. It might only be one, but that's awesome. Make the attack. The creature technically already died. I was just going to describe it with more. <laughs> okay. More zest. Uh, Twenty-two to hit. Yeah, that's going to hit. And then that's like ten to thirteen damage. Okay. Fourteen damage. Sorry. That is fine. Okay. The gas form gets wicked away. The golem makes no move. <clears throat> Silence reigns in the chamber. Once more, I was hoping to stop the music before it came back on. Uh, <laughs> you almost got it. Yeah. Okay. However, the portcullis remains down because the bears have uh, one bear has been pulled off but I mean the bears, Kevin you did command them to move back after a short while you just want to wait for them I didn't command them to move back okay but yeah. they speak bear Yeah. so yeah, I can tell can, them as a bear um, also I <laughs> I spent that entire round looking to try and find out and I, it, I am not sure okay. it doesn't specify okay. okay we'll look over it later so, I don't know, but I guess if the party wants me to have the first bear sit down, I can. Sure. But it's their call. If you guys want it to happen, yeah. then I'll... Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, the bear returns and sits down. The port is open back up. And there is glimmering of color in both chambers beyond. Gold in the first and red in the second. We are going to remain in initiative. Drea, if that was the end of your turn. Yep. Uh, Thok, it is your turn. Do I see... You're, you're all welcome to discuss with each other what you'd like to do. Out of turn. Does anything seem to move, or just the lights of the eyes come back on? The eyes are still silvery. Still silvery. And all three switches are down right now, or we haven't pushed the switch in this, this chamber yet? I am under the impression all three switches all are three down. That's down. why the port courses came up. Okay. Put the armory door didn't open yet? It is slowly open. Does it? Oh, okay. Does it seem like the other golems are moving towards the bears? Nope. All right. Okay. I'll Let's hold just... an action uh, conditionally again, like if the golem in our room becomes hostile while we'll attack it okay but other than that i'll just hold right around by the armory okay well uh if we move the bear off the second switch in the middle room different happens 
this is a process of elimination. Mm -hmm. Probably, probably you need all three switches down. Yeah. The, the important thing here is the the door to the armory is opening. How how slow is the door moving? Like, is it gonna take like an it's, hour to open? No, no, it's it's already it's like already opening up to you. You can you can see inside. There are uh, like a layer of shelving just covered in in what looked to be just serviceable weapons and armor. Um, it would take probably several long rests to like go through all of them, figure out what's magical, what needs attunement, or I you know someone need to cast identify and actually pour over it. But there is a shelf of just weaponry and a shelf of armor. All various types. Mm. Can we wait for it to turn fully around? Sure, yeah. That locks in place with a clunk. Just pouring over the shelves, um, do I see any plate mail of any sort? Uh, yeah. There's okay. probably one full set of plate. Okay, I'll take it off the shelf and see if anything happens. Fock runs forward and takes the plate off the shelf. <laughs> Look around. It seems, seems okay. It seems okay. Okay. Uh, it is the size of a gnome. But uh, I was waiting to see if that was going to be the caveat. But who knows? Maybe you can attune to it. Okay. So looking through here, you just said it's a bunch of swords and armor and stuff. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's, it's all varying things. This is a point where we are going to do something out of session. I am going to start using treasure points with you. Typically, mm -hmm. it's done in campaigns um with multiple dms so that the players can finish a game and they let's say they played for three hours you get three treasure points and then there's a list of magical items that you can spend these on and then they appear in the story so okay. i was hoping that you guys would go the other way first and we would get to this at the end of the session so i could be like we'll talk about this afterward but uh <laughs> You'll just need we to attune to these items anyway during a long rest, which I assume may be the end of the session. So, so uh, can we just stash as much in our bag as as possible? Like, how does? Yeah, um, we see a bunch of stuff in front of us. We want to yeah. bring it with us. Yeah, what's the best way to manage that? Well, this is up to you. Uh, you can't carry all of it because it's it's an armory for a a, a facility. Um, okay. I, I try very hard not to give you guys bags of holding for this very reason because it's kind of a, you know, it's not a stuff everything in the sack and run like a bandit. Um, mm -hmm. You might need to hire someone to come and help you. You might need to return and see what's happened to it. Maybe scavengers have come in the interim. Uh, maybe you want to alarm or ward these or trap them. Maybe, you know, this is a spot that I think bags of holding kind of kill creativity. <laughs> If we're going to be using the treasure system to talk after session to buy things or, you know, point by, or mm -hmm. how do we know what's on the shelves and how do we know what to take now? You don't. Good. It's an unfortunate predicament. It is, there is just the standard weaponry. Like, there's just valuable weapons that you can find in the, in the play handbook. There's swords, there's armor of all sorts. Um, but if it's non-magical, it is for a no. There are some magical items in there, but like in the in the event of Thok, I want him to say, "Okay, I've accrued this many treasure points. I'm going to use it for this item." Um, so there's a little bit of a give and take where I actually like you can this way you can create a character concept that is built toward an item too. Maybe you want to combo your your class features with an item, and I I think that's a big part of D and D right now that you that's difficult to do because you have to rely on the DM to give you things. Um, but, I mean, there are just standard things. It is just an armory. So anything you see on the shelf at first glance, you already have, essentially. You've, you've got your armor, you've got your weapons. Um, you'll have to take a long rest to figure what stuff is anyway. Okay. 
I didn't write a list. Like, there's 12 great swords and, and four chain splint armor pieces. Um, it was supposed to be a reward at the end of the session, but you guys got here a bit early. Huh. All right. Well, if I... If I can sit down for a little bit, I can prepare a spell that might be able to help us out. Um, but I'll need a short rest for that. Um, but yeah. I can conjure basically a floating platform that we can put all this on for one hour and we can cart it all out of here. I think we can spare an hour. Nothing to be. Well, I don't think we're ready to leave yet, so we may have to come back before we leave. Do you know what I mean? So come back to the treasure on our way out of the GCMC. Fair enough. It's not going anywhere. It doesn't seem like anyone's here, so... But the, the floating disc can hold up to 500 pounds. And it's basically like a, a magical uh, cart that I can keep near me. So on our way out, uh, let's pile as much as we can and bring it out here. And either we can use what we want, or maybe the gnomes can use the, the rest to, to get out, or we can sell it, or I don't know. Are you taking a rest right now? Uh, guys, do you, do you think how, you want to rest? How long is a, is a, long, is a short rest again? Can, An hour. Bryce, can you look up the rule for changing spellcasting? It might be a long rest. It might be a full eight hour rest to, to change spells. Sure, I'll double could, check. I could be wrong. But a short rest, Ben, would run an hour, which I believe I is the length of, the of your summon spells. So I would, I would just sit in the middle chamber so I could go back and resummon them in the others. Okay. That's that's how I would get around it. I just can't, I just can't summon in all three chambers from the furthest one, but I could do it from the center chamber. I mean, at that point, you could all just physically hmm. go to each chamber. Yeah, long rest for changing spells. You're right. All right. Do for we... now, Gabe. For now. <laughs> for now. What's that, Ash? I said, do we need a short rest right now? I could benefit greatly from any kind of rest. I'm in for it. Yeah, I could probably use one. Well, for the sake of uh, of Kevin, let's go back to the first chamber so you can drop the bears. Drop the bears. Drop the bears. Okay. Uh, are you guys good with that? Good. Mm -hmm. If you see anything you want from the treasure, grab it now. I'll drop I my bear in... form and look around. Okay. You, you're all welcome. Nice. Yeah, there's there's definitely a, a series of knives that you could grab. Uh, any anything from just the player's handbook armory, like standard gear that you would see when you're making your character, it's definitely there. And okay. you're welcome to take a couple instances of it if you'd like. It's just basically one of these is going to happen to be magical after you spend some treasure points with me. Got it. But we'll do do that out of session because I don't want to spend 45 minutes streaming us looking at tables. Fair enough. Okay. <laughs> I need, right. I need uh, a nap real heckin' hard. <laughs> okay, so let's go to the first chamber then. Okay. Yeah. So you all go back to the first chamber? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And you're leaving the bears on there for now. They'll disappear in an hour. Yeah, so can... right before the rest ends, basically. Are we doing a long rest, or are we doing a short rest? Short. Shout it, short. short. Okay. Uh, just bear in mind, no, you don't regenerate spell slots on a short rest, unless you're a warlock or a wizard, or a land druid. Different. I'm going to roll some hit dice, though. Mm -hmm. Me too. Use my second wound first, since I'll get that right back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everyone, if you want to roll your hit die, please do so. Uh, the spell ends. The portcullis is slammed down toward the tail end of your short rest. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. How many hit dice do I even have? I want to double check. Uh, as many as one per level. So I think you guys are seven. Mm-hmm. Yeah. in this chamber or are you leaving for the rest i think we're staying here yeah yeah um okay so towards the tail end of the rest ren you can't help but to nod off where you're sitting <laughs> wouldn't it be a dungeon crawl without something going bump during a rest Hmm, Ren. You're sitting in the very same chamber that you're in with your party, but your party is nowhere to be seen. You wake up in a panic. Cold sweat starts to wash over your forehead. Your stomach does little topsy-turvy twists and turns. And the golem is there for a second, but then that rock begins to peel away, leaving behind underneath the skin and flesh the blackened, charred, dark skin of that creature that you saw eating away at your mother. And it crawls and worms its way out, and it begins to walk towards you, sort of slack-jawed and slanty and taking lanky long steps towards you very slowly. But you're paralyzed with fear, and you cannot move. And it says, Man and machine, man and machine, I am the bridge. What are you doing here, Ren? I'm paralyzed, but I can talk. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're, well, it's just like you're a, a sleep terror. Okay. Uh, I'm here to, to save my people. I'm here to save the gnomes. Save the gnomes? Hmm. Hmm. Well, that's a nice thought. Because when I asked you what you love, you wouldn't even tell me. You just told me what you hate. Hate, hate, hate. That's all you people have given me. Hate and death. Anger. You don't even I don't, tell the truth to each other. I don't mean you any harm. Oh, mm -hmm. I just saw some malady uh, attack our people, and well, we just want to live in peace. Peace. An interesting concept. You travel with a man who gave me up. You let him give me up. To death? Is that you? Mm, maybe once upon a time. It's not just Tef in here anymore, Ren. Mm, I am the bridge between man and machine. Man and machine. What can I do to help you? I think we're past help. You wouldn't tell me what you love. You'd just lie. You're lying. He was right. You mortals deserve death, and I will give it. I need a charisma saving throw as Tef attempts to possess you. Uh, 20. Unnatural. Okay. Ren, you wake up. <gasps> Your party is there, looking at you. Perhaps you were fidgeting in your sleep. You are fully in control of yourself for now. Okay. You have a feeling that Tef, or whatever he has become, will be waiting for you the next time you fall asleep. Do I remember my dream? Yeah, yeah, you remember everything. Okay. I will, I'll tell the party. Uh, this, this may sound strange. This, when we first got here to the GCMC, I had a vision of 
some terrible scathing shadow shape uh, tearing away at my mother and it went away just as I went to sleep now I saw the same image and I think it is whatever is controlling this entire complex down here the tentacles uh, the crystal creatures everything we've seen and I think it's some twisted version of Tef. Uh, cool. I think I made a mistake. I think you did, Seth. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna switch uh, back. You may not have known what you did, but Tef, if it is him or part of him or was him, thinks only in anger and, and death and destruction. But he was such a such a sweet boy. Well, I wonder what happened. Maybe they're sacrificing into the brimstone yeah. hell below. Yeah, given given him away might have might have changed his demeanor a little bit. I I know Gilded Frost is was a bad person. I didn't know he had that much power to corrupt Tef into a shadow monster. Well, it's not all Tef either. There is machine to. Yes, some other confounding force. I ju I just know that's not the last we'll see of him. In fact, I think any time I go to sleep, I may see him again. I feared when I gave him the gilded frost that he would perish. At least he's still alive. He could very well may be saved. No. That's Maybe. very comforting and positive thinking for you, says Bookworm. I'm just going to ignore it, and I'm going to focus on Drea. What do you mean, no? There is no saving something. I mean, we haven't even tried. Of his it's not worth the trying. We should just I will, move on. I will say I felt some kind of uh, a presence, like he was trying to invade my mind. I was successful this time, but I don't know about the next time. We are brought together by prophecy. I believe we can save anyone and everyone. That's a noble belief, Seth. Uh, I just know the clock is ticking for my people, and we've got to carry on for now. Well, if he ever pops back into your dreams again, let us know. I will. Of course, for all of our sake. I mean, if he has <clears throat> enough power to paralyze you, I don't even know what else he could do. His power down here seems to be immense. Uh, we've nearly died multiple times, and I think that's just the tip of the iceberg. Anyway, time's a wasted, and I'll just uh, leave the room. Okay. All right. I also wanted to say that there was a lot more to that trap that you guys got to bypass there, so well done. Not a lot more, but um, the way you played it was it was good. It was good, the game. good yeah. job. You guys are doing all right. You guys are doing all right. We puzzling good. Mm hmm. Okay. We we bear puzzling. Okay. <laughs> well, should, should we head through that doorway that I had seen on the left side? Yeah, I think so. Okay, uh, so you're, these, you'll hold. you're doubling back to the other chamber? <laughs> okay. Doubling. All right. So the party comes back through. Um, this time through, you do... It's been a while now. Um, you note that... You note a couple things. One, the blood is gone. As you're walking through the chamber in front of the fan. Which is peculiar, but um, okay. And the console to the left down the hall has completely stopped sparking. 
In fact, the the blinking lights on it have even gone dead. Okay. And if you continue on through, then you can turn that corner. I would like a marching order. Oh, take the lead. Okay. I'll go. Oh yeah, Drea. I'll go right behind Drea. Okay, Drea. Five, and then two. And then Ren. Yeah. Mm. What do you think, Scott? Dead last. You can go last? Okay, I'll go in front of Scott. Okay. Dead last. <laughs> Classic. All right, uh, where do you guys want Bookworm? Where Probably next to Drea. To Probably he's right next to Drea, I'd assume. Okay, you can tag along yeah. with Drea. He's small, so he can... Okay. All right. Fock, you round the corner first, then Dre and Bookworm. There is enough space for the entire party to fill this chamber. It is a 20-foot square. It's the end of the hallway. There is a doorway, and to the left of that doorway, there is a patch of shadow that's clinging to the wall, and you still hear that whispering. Ren, Ren, can you make out that sound? What is it? Let me listen close and, and hear if I can understand it. Okay. As you approach it, Ren, it feels like it's muffled. It's like talking into a pillow. You can't quite make it out, even from okay. five feet away. You have. It, it seems like you have to interact with the shadows somehow. Okay. Um, can I go even closer to the shadows? Yeah. Are you touching uh, yeah, to me it just sounds like I'm not close enough, so I I would try to get closer. Okay. Do you Are they like, like just normal shadows or wispy? Like they're thick and magical. They appear to be like clinging to whatever's on the wall. Okay. Uh, I'll look back at the party and say I'm gonna take a closer look. Do you need any assistance? Uh, shadows are my forte. I'll let you know, and I'll I'll try to get closer okay what would you like to do you can get as close as you want i mean i have you like in my mind standing right up against it basically so okay um can i enter the shadows yeah it's, it's just like a small five foot square perhaps down towards the ground okay it's like clinging to the wall it's like imagine they're sort of roiling up and down the wall like like leeches <laughs> but okay sh shadow leeches okay can I hear any clearer? It's it's like the voice is just beyond the shadows, speaking into them. They're they're clearly the boundary. Got it. All right, I will. Am I in the shadows right now? I have you in my mind, standing directly in front of them, not in them. If you okay. tell me you're you want to be in them, then I'll, I'll let you like manipulate them physically. But I'm gonna go in. Okay. All right. The shadows sort of wash over you briefly, and you're right up against the wall. And you see, built into the wall, it looks like some sort of magic mouth spell. Um, but the mouth is peculiar. It's got broken teeth and sort of blackened lips, like they've been charred almost. Like you can see pink cracks inside of flesh. Um, and the voice that speaks in Gnomish says, They... They just didn't listen. Couldn't, maybe. I told them. Blatant violation. Maybe solutions in here, behind the revolving locks. Maybe a serum. I'll have to check. If I don't come back, and you hear this, friend, whoever you are, consider turning back yourself and leaving this place. And Ren, I'd like a history check. Oh, man. Twelve. Okay. You, the voice is familiar. A long, long time ago, though. The check wasn't quite enough to nail down who it was. Someone far in the okay. past. Okay. And you can just walk right out of the shadows. They aren't interacting with you. Uh, well, guys, there's some voice back there. I think it's a magic mouth spell, and it's saying that we should turn back, but also there might be some cure or serum ahead behind some locks 
Hmm. Well, let's go ahead then. Yeah, I'll I, head I don't towards the door. There's no turning back at this. I appreciate that, guys. Okay, forward. Okay. All right. If you open the door, it's like this large lever that twists all the way around in 180 degrees, and you hear the door kind of slide open and swish across the stone floor. A large round chamber awaits the party. There is to your left, immediately in the wall, a lever. Uh, and the chamber dips downward into several tiers of levels, complete with seats and desks, until at the center, there's a floating table upon which there is something covered in a heavy layer of gauze. Beyond that is an opening in the wall in which there's a metallic shelf, almost like the innards of a safe, yet barren and cold and empty. So you're in a very large circular chamber, and a stairway directly in front of you leads downward. There's a lever in the wall to your left, right next to the heavy door. And as you travel down that stair towards the sunken center, there are multiple tiers. It almost looks like some sort of viewing gallery or classroom. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's like tables and desks scattered about, but they look disused. Have I been here? Do I remember this? Uh, you've probably been in this chamber, yeah. Okay. You didn't, I however, I know that this. there is an opening in the far end that can revolve. Okay. Well, I've at least been in some chamber like this, some kind of educational viewing of whatever's down in the middle. Do you have a chance to know what the, the lever does? Ooh. No, not to my memory. Our history of lever pulling in this particular place doesn't seem like it's the best either. We're not bad. <laughs> we made one mistake. Did you say that there was something in the middle of the room before? Yes, there's a floating table at the very sunken base. And up upon it, there is something covered in gauze. Can I approach it? Sure. It's about 20 feet down, and you, you're taking steps down deeper and deeper until you hit the bottom. The table is floating, as though it's on a tensor's floating disc spell. Huh. <laughs> Um, do I recognize, like, a familiar form, like, underneath the covering? It definitely looks humanoid. Very small. Hmm, seems like there might be a gnome under here. I'll uncover it. Alright. And the music changes. Of course. Bum, 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 bum. And the beholder descends through the ceiling like a projector. He did just disappear. Like, we don't know where he went. He's just, he just locked him underneath the chamber. He's just chilling down there. Ah, oh. uh, okay. I mean, potentially. <laughs> Forever. Up later, the blood disappeared. Things are happening. This place is not ruled necessarily by a set of concrete rules. Um, okay. Thok, you reach forward, and you peel back the gauze slowly, revealing underneath the pale flesh of a dead gnome. Mm. You continue to pull away the gauze. Okay. You reveal he is dressed in a gown of sorts, like a medical gown. Uh, and you do note something immediately very strange about him. He looks almost exsanguinated, like he's completely pale, he's cold, he's been long dead. In fact, you can't even tell how long, but he doesn't stink or anything. So, there's something unusual going on there. And there are two chunks carved very cleanly out of his temples. Each about a cubic inch worth of flesh missing. Hmm. It's very interesting. It's known as drained of its fluid, no blood or anything of the sort. He's got these strange marks on his head. Do they, looking at them, do they look like claw-like, knowing that we've seen like a bunch of gnomes get snatched away by claws? Nope, they look surgical. Can I Two. make a medicine check to see if I recognize what would be... Sure. Whatever thing was performed. Come on! That is an 18 plus. 
24, 22. Okay. You don't, you're not familiar with any sort of procedure that would have done this, Kevin. You've been around a long time. And mm -hmm. while you're not classically trained, this is bizarre. Yeah. Um, it doesn't look like it was the cause of death, bizarrely enough. Um, but it, you do note that there are singes of burning. Like perhaps something had been in there that was very hot. Mm. Does or it or electrical? Did they seem post mortem? Like, so you're saying it's not it's not the cause of death, but it's like Correct. it happened before death, but didn't kill him, or it happened yeah. after. Okay, so I'll convey yeah. that. I don't think that the Bernie things were after. I don't think they killed him, but it didn't seem like it was a fun time. Hmm. Interesting. Is there any sort of machinery above floating disc? Hmm. No. Empty room. Okay. Vren, do you recognize this man? Can I come down to talk and take a look? You do recognize him as the source of the voice you heard outside. Yeah. You don't know his name, you just remember the gnome that complained to your mother in that memory long, long ago. Ooh. Mm. I was gonna say, was this the guy from the narrative? Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. I've seen this gnome before. He raised some red flags to my mother about safety procedures and protocol down here. I think that's the first and last I ever saw of him. Mm. Whatever happened didn't seem like he stayed very safe. It landed on a... Safe, I don't know about. What were the problems that he raised? Uh, something about uh, biological experiments, the radiation and something like that. Uh, uncharacteristic for the type of work normally done down here. Well, given what we know of the machines being fused with organic parts, it seems that perhaps your mother may have been experimenting with that technology. I think so. Illegally and without support. Hmm. Well, there's a very <laughs> peculiar lever calling my name. Seems to be the only point of interest. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, Seth. All right, I'll, I'll flip the switch. Okay. Lightning bolt! Wait, no, I see. <laughs> Remaining down by the corpse. Uh, I'm going to back into like the audience area. Okay. All right. Seth? I'll stay right there. Okay. Seth, you flip the switch? The lever? I do. Okay. Immediately you hear gears and whirring cranking behind the walls as that safe disappears and the wall behind it rotates, re-revealing no. behind door number two. Not the beholder. The beholder! <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. That's not the beholder. Jeez. <laughs> I clenched. It's the armory stuff. I, I clenched. Ben is just waiting for that beholder to come back. He's going to pop back in and he's going to shoot me and like, oh, guess he didn't hit anybody else. <laughs> ben, so, Mr. Undead Beholder can't hurt you. Yeah, he's, he's just <laughs> right here. I don't like it. <laughs> it's not It's not real. Can't hurt you. <laughs> All right. I hope it reveals old Gorg, honestly. <laughs> or Chad Oreo. The second cavern opens up and it's just like a small natural cavern. It's just sort of opened up and a bunch of bats fly out. <gasps> Look at all these little Kevins. <laughs> fly yeah. Kevins. Sky Kevins. Yeah, do you think they call them bats? Um, but they just sort of gather up in the ceiling and flap around for a bit. But it does. it just looks like a small cavern where someone could have stashed things. But it does appear to be empty. Would you like to pull the lever again, Seth? Guys, I'm not, I'm not doing anything by myself anymore. <laughs> I'm trying to be a team player. Oh, the lever crumbles. <laughs> I'm okay with it. I accept his decision as long as it works out and immediately reject it if it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
Well, let's see how it shakes out then. Yeah, I'll yeah. throw it again. It's All a right. bold stretch there, Cotton. The beholder appears. The behold behind door number three. <laughs> Another eye stop. I just, I'm, I'm very uncomfortable with the idea that it just disappeared and we haven't had to worry about him again yet. Drea, where are you? Are you down or up or I'm... slightly out of range? I think is how I would describe Drea's current position. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, there's like an audience viewing position. Is it like seats or something or whatever? Yeah, there's, there's some chairs. All right, I'll be in like the first or second row seat, sort of. By first, the... first as in at the bottom or at the top? At the bottom. Okay. Okay. Uh, Bookworm pulls up a chair next to you and he pops there and he starts kicking his legs bored, staring up at the back. <laughs> I challenge him to a thumb war. <laughs> Are you sure you want to do this? <laughs> Absolutely. Bring All right, bring it on. Sleight of hand check. Oh! Ooh. It's a game of finesse, not strength. Roll a d3. <laughs> no. Oh, no! Well, I got an 18! For our Mr. Bookworm. All right, he clasps hands with you. Um, surprisingly sweaty. However, a little uh, unsurprisingly a little sweaty. Let's be real. <laughs> right, right. And you immediately begin to attempt to to lock down his thumb, but he's just <laughs> slipping out of there. And then he finally gets you. And just as you're about to lose, you yank back in surprise, and your chair breaks from under you, and you fall down on your butt. <laughs> I told you, you can't beat me at this. Why are your fingers so slippery? <laughs> That's my secret. That's how I turn the pages. <laughs> and that's that's the stream. <laughs> okay. Anyway. All right. So, Dre, you have lost. Um, yeah. Bookworm, he tries to help you up. <laughs> but he's he's not strong enough. Are you going to do you take his assistance? <laughs> Um, I'll try and let him help first, and then just sort of sit on the ground looking up at him. And I'm gonna... Out of boredom. Nothing's happened in the room yet, right? We're just gonna... The the, the wall is rotating as Seth has just pulled the lever again. Wow. Hmm. Instead of getting up and taking his help, uh, I will offer him my sword. Okay. Just he, a and my ass. He takes it and he <laughs> wields it over his head and he's like, wah, wah, as he is very, very small and that is a very large sword. Um, but as he sort of teeters out into the middle of the, the room, he and Ren are lined up for a moment and the revolving door comes to a close. And instead of another chamber, this time there's a large steel pane of reflective surface. And Ren, you see Bookworm pass through the mirror with the sword over his head. And he looks, and you look. And behind both of you is the tall figure, tall with shadowy skin, eyes like furnaces lanking toward both of you i need a madness check Ren. what is madness uh we're gonna do wisdom a d20 with well uh, your wisdom modifier 19. okay it's the strangest thing ren you stave off the madness again, but Bookworm doesn't. It appears that he also sees Tef or Tantalus or whoever the creature may be. But it's like he's seeing him with his magical sight through you. I need to do a little roll for, for little Bookworm. <laughs> the 
character experiences an overpowering urge to eat something strange. <laughs> you guys might not Wait, notice no. because Bookworm just runs off and he tries, he goes straight for the poop journal. Fuck. <laughs> not the sacred log of logs. <laughs> <laughs> the log of logs. He makes a beeline for you, Thok, and he starts clawing at your, your bags. He's like, where is it? Where is it? Give it to me. I need to eat it. What do you need? What? Why? The book, the book, the book, the book, the book. What book? I don't know. I know you have a book. Just let me eat it. No, just calm down. What's come over you? Ah, you didn't see it? To see what? He looks at Ren and he points at you, Ren. What is it? It's Tef. He's here. I saw him. Mm, let me eat the book. Let me eat the book. <laughs> You can't have it. It's important. It's how I keep track of watch. I would Does anyone else see him? If anyone else approaches the mirror, they do not. And Ren, in fact, as you're looking, when you look over your shoulder, he is gone. Okay. Uh... I could have sworn he was just there. Bookworm, just, just talk to Kevin. I'll give you a berry. You'll feel fine. I don't want a berry. I want a book. I want the log of logs. Oh, man. Just a bite. Come on. What if I just give you a page? I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll pull out a page of Seth's diary that I stole. He was on watch at one point. I just <laughs> hand it to him. <laughs> he scarfs down the page. <laughs> Satisfied. Mm -hmm. And he picks he picks Drea's sword back up and he starts to like try and gnaw on the hilt. Hey, did you, did, hey, no, it's not yours. I I I, I can't help myself. Yeah, have have this whole thing. And I again toss him the the journal of Seth. Okay. He he <laughs> gingerly puts Drea's sword down and begins to munch down on this diary. Seth. Do you want to interact with this at all? I'm Do you want to pull the lever again? The book so just like, Nobody <laughs> likes me, but I kind of deserve it. But I, I, I lied gonna, to them again, but they found out. I was going to improv stuff from it. <laughs> I was going to wait for Bookworm to finish eating it and to have him feel satisfied before doing anything, though. Do I do I see that it, like it's definitely like my journal that I just lost? Sure. No, 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 give him back. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Bookworm begins to eat with more intensity. <laughs> I'll, I'll take the other half and I'm going to try and yank it away. Okay. Oh, no. Yeah, you, you just yank it away. Bookworm's just like, ah! <sighs> Thank you. You did owe me food. You never delivered. This is your fault. Well, I guess that says we're even then, huh? You eat, my, you eat my memories, read my mind. All I do is ask you for clothes. Maybe you should try being cuter. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he looks around to make sure the party isn't, isn't like, can't see his face. He does this to you, Seth. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Bookworm, I'm trying to be a new man, but you're testing my patience. That's what I do. I push buttons. Yeah. Takes one to know one. I mean, I guess. I, but I, I, try, I try to tell the truth more. I, I think that's really all that... Anyway, I'm, I'm going back over to Drea because you kind of creeped me out. You haven't blinked. In like a while. Uh, yeah, uh, but at least I have two eyes. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Uh, suck it one eye. What the heck? You know, man, I have feelings, okay? <laughs> yeah, and, and you just hate sluts. <laughs> what the hell is going on? You think on? I'd give up this? I hold up the poop journal. <laughs> Not in your lifetime. Oh, yeah. I pocket it. Bookworms. Yes. Speaking, of, no, I'm done with you, bookworm. Be gone. Okay, Go, goodbye. Go <laughs> back with I your BFF. You all right? <laughs> Thok, what were you doing with my diary? Well, after the 
watch happens and I log everybody's activities. I get bored sometimes, I need to keep entertained. And, oh, wow. Sure. I thought the, I thought the lies that you spewed in public were embarrassing. <laughs> sure, maybe I lie from time to time, but I don't steal while people are sleeping. Oh, you'd have gotten it back eventually. Consider it a, a borrow. It's covered in drool, and half the pages are gone. Well, actually, <laughs> how, how, like, how torn up is it? I'd say you got through, like, the bottom 20% of it. Uh, okay. No more reading my diary, Doc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I won't mention that you had a thing for Ruth Peppercorn before she betrayed you all. I did not. <laughs> it's in your diary. It is was not. You read, you read wrong. So I need to call for a check here? I don't really know what's I happening. I don't know either. Even the dungeon master. Like, we're just we're off. Just, just, we're all just improving this. We're off just book, off. in book right now. Can I just be looking at this mirror the whole time? <laughs> yes. Yes, you can. Kevin is just watching this exchange just like, I don't understand what's going on. <laughs> I hate her. I hate her. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Rendemir just it looks like it's just a, a very well polished stainless steel panel. If you do look back, though, at the door, you note that the door is gone. It's like whatever's revolving around the chamber hasn't made its full way around yet. Ah, OK. Um. Do I do I sense any kind of purpose for what the, what a mirror here would be used for? It it like like it's just a panel that happened to be polished for whatever okay. reason in this place in this moment. Um, the two of you were able to see the same image. Okay. All right. Uh, but it continues to revolve as the door. Only if Seth pulls the lever again. Okay. Seth, would you give that liver another uh, pull? As you wish, bestie. And I'll pull it again. Okay. You do so, and again, the grinding reoccurs. The outside rim revolves around the chamber, uh, rumbling to a halt once more. And it's again, it looks like another one of those self sh safe shelves. Whew. It's getting late. Uh, and inside there's a polished wooden box. Where the mirror was, there's now a polished... Yeah, it's it's like a it's some sort of circular system that just rotates. Or perhaps okay. the chamber you're in is rotating, you can't really tell. Got it, easy. okay. I think I'm, I'm understanding. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll look at the party and invite them to come take a look. Uh, there's something here now. Seth, don't pull that lever for a sec. Come take a look. Okay. The, approach. the party gathers around, or, or just Seth? Come over. Let's go. Okay. Okay. Drea? Yeah. Okay. All right. You have the box in hand, Ren. Or perhaps it's still on the the shelf. I didn't. I don't mean to say that you went and picked it up. Uh, I'll leave it there, but. Uh... Barring any uh, obvious signs of tampering, I'm going to try to lift up the front of it. Okay. It does appear to be locked uh, as you try and lift the lid. It, you know. Okay. Um, well, this is locked. I, I'm not very good with lock picking. Uh, well, anyone of you guys see a key around? What kind of uh, check would check? someone need to try and get in? Uh, sleight of hand lock picking. Or you can just break it. Can I check the gnome's pockets on the table? Uh, sure. He has a gown on, though, so what kind of pockets are you checking? Uh, just kind of pocket. Just padding. <laughs> padding anywhere to see if I sense a foreign object. 
Ren walks over to the dead nose and <laughs> starts patting him down in his gown. Uh, you do not find anything hidden on his immediate person. Okay. I was about to go further with that joke, but... <laughs> check, check the flesh I wasn't bomb. joking. <laughs> um... All right. I, I don't want to break this on the floor just in case there might be something fragile inside, but... Um... Drea, can we use one of your smaller swords maybe and try to pry it open? You might be muted. Uh, that's fine. All that came out of my mouth was, uh... <laughs> <laughs> my smallest sword is a long sword. <laughs> um, uh, I, I, I do mean, have a... Uh, try. Anyone else have a dagger? I have a I have a ceremonial knife and a mind spike. Let's try the knife. Yep. Just wedge it in there and give it a little twist. Okay. Scott, make a strength athletics check. <laughs> or an attack roll. Your choice. Uh, 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 so six. Six. Yeah. Come here, give it to me, lover boy. Here you go. Alright, so let me see if I can get this thing open. I'll you try to. Completely fail. Oh, I gotta give this the same technique a shot. Okay. Give it the old thock twist and. You said strength athletics? Yeah. Something. Uh, 22. <laughs> what was that? 22. Okay. You wedge the dagger in cleanly and snap it open. Uh, you hear something snap from within, though. The poison dart trap that was set. Because you didn't pick it successfully, so it. You hear that? Fires darts out in all directions. Kind of uh, dexterity oh saving throws. Because he just broke it open. We all just walked up to it. Like, you want to be here for this? Yeah, I do. But make sure we're all within <laughs> range. I had to ask. I'm sorry. Uh, God. I can't roll anything today. I need to microwave these dice again. I got a four. Again. <laughs> Charge what, ha what happens if you microwave dice? I'm guessing well, they're they just melt. melt. These ones are I'm metal, so I wouldn't happened. recommend it. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. <laughs> they become literal. What is that? When then, like a claymore explodes. What do they call the ball bearings? Shrapnel? Yeah, yeah. They yeah. become okay. shrapnel. Yeah. Oh man, they become energized with positive energy from the microwave. All right, that is not something we condone here at Of Nights and Nats. Please do not microwave. Don't your microwave mouth. your dice. Sorry. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> Or the plastic ones. They Unless you want it. to. I'm not a boss of anybody, but <laughs> but you probably shouldn't. Um, we recommend against it. Is that a four, Drea? No, 14. 14, okay. I got a four. 15. DC is 12. God dang I it. failed. Why do I keep getting poisoned? <laughs> yeah, I got it. Yeah, too. <laughs> I hate today. Ooh. All right. If you roll higher, you avoid it. If you roll lower, you take... Thank God we rested. Six mm -hmm. poison damage. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's just a poison dark trap. I don't trust anything. It's not so. I just realized as I put it in, I was like, I don't think any of them have thieves tools. <laughs> nope. We're not thievey anyway. people, Gabe. Hey, it's nothing wrong with that. You'll just have to keep breaking shit open. Uh, it's true. Eventually, you'll just start like stuffing it in sacks and chucking it 20 feet. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So you have broken it open. And within, there are several paper documents. Oh, I forgot to do that during the fight. <laughs> in the first hallway, the poison was supposed to confuse you. So there would be a chance of people walking. Oh, man. It's fine. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. So. Within there are several envelopes. Would anyone like to interact with those? 
they're written in Gnomish. Bren, this looks like your forte. Yeah, it's got to be. Yep. Fun. I will read to the class. Yay. Okay. Okay. Story time. Story time. It's dull reading, unfortunately, I'm afraid. One of which it is a schematic, which you see a very large and peculiar golem, like a humanoid figure. However, the stomach, like the torso, has been completely carved out. And you see a peculiar array of both wires and ligaments, etc., sort of like cross-section diagrammed out next to it, like like little arrows pointing in and then zoom ins and different various things. But it's all very technical and something that you don't quite understand. And then there's another one where there's a humanoid figure carved out of the face. Carved out of the face? Yeah, the face has a humanoid shape carved out of it, and so and the entire sternum is carved up. Okay. And then there's another document that is the death certificate for a gnome named Yernin Traver. When was the date? Um, a couple years ago. Okay. I don't really have a, a real great <laughs> lockdown on the calendar <laughs> system here. No, that's Hopefully fine. Just ago, like sooner, recent, or very, very long ago. Okay, a few years ago. Uh, and you remember that the gnome's name was Yernin. Your mother referred to him as Yernin in your memory. Okay. And I'll just take the take that paper and say this is that guy over there. Ooh. He's been dead for a few years. Does he look like he's been dead for a few years? No, he looks nope. pristine. He's holding up pretty well. Mm -hmm. That doesn't make sense. Is there anything on this paper that might give us some insight into what's been going on with him? Uh, you could... Yeah, if, if you read it, it says that he donated his body to science after dying of natural causes. Which does not seem sincere mm. with what you know. But. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's one thing to do scientific experiments or alchemical experiments or even studying the arcane, but it's another to experiment on human life. Gnome. On gnomic life. <laughs> <laughs> life experience. Um, we all see the, 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 right? the schematics. <laughs> yeah. Can I walk over and do whatever I have to do to see if the stomach is still intact. Of the urine and yeah. Yes, urinin, urinin. He's urinin. The, the, <laughs> urinin's urinin. Uh, the stomach is intact if you pull the gown up, exposing <laughs> poor urinin. Oh boy. <laughs> and just, oh well. He's oh boy. a dead body. We've all seen it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, where, where was I? Um, stomach. Make a medicine check. This is bad D twenty wisdom save or wisdom mod. Dipper, uh, that was a nineteen natural. Nineteen. Mm -hmm. All right. As you pull the gown up, your hand sort of brushes over the stomach, and you note that something's wrong with it. Like it doesn't feel right. It feels like the guts might have been pulled out or something. Like it's it's just it's yeah. It's, it's, um, stitches. Nope. Can I use my sword to just and try to like open it? Yes, yes, you may. Yeah. Your sword, so like you're using like a two-handed sword, just like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just Carefully. Rend, like... rend the body. <laughs> Drea uses a two-hand sword to open this gnome like a can of soup. <laughs> um, yeah. You, you run the sword around as carefully as possible. Can I open his stomach? You reach forward and you feel your fingers slip under the flesh and you begin to peel it back and Bookworm puts a hand on your wrist and he looks at you. He's just trying to stop you. He he doesn't. He, he seems to not know what words to say. Mm. 
Dre, you already risk deep. Might as well keep going. Spoken like Would a true like Seth. <laughs> Andrea says that to Seth. Would you like to take over? Yeah, sure. Why not? Bookworm uh, releases your wrist and backs away from the corpse. Yeah, I don't you know, know about as, this. As someone who's died many times, I'm kind of a pro at this stuff. Dying? Um, <laughs> Dying many times? You can't tell me I'm trying to kill you when you are clearly trying to kill yourself. <laughs> I was like a couple steps back. Yep, same. I'm just gonna stand in front of Pokemon where he is. Okay. If anything happens, it's been a pleasure with you all. Oh, I'll get up all in them guts. All right, so you just. Yeah. Hey, we found the beholder. He was inside the. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Okay. Where's the music? The June theme starts playing. Yeah, I'm waiting for the I'm waiting for the drums. <laughs> oh, that's BFG division starts coming on. <laughs> yeah. Rip and tear. <laughs> okay. Oh. Seth. You reach into the creature's stomach, well, Yurnan's stomach, and you feel Is the like music a playing? distinct. No, no, it's okay, just, just silence. Okay, just checking, just checking. You feel a distinct lack of organs, but your hands do tighten around something, something hard. What would you like to do? Uh, whatever it is, does it feel? Natural or unnatural? Definitely unnatural. Well, like, it, it feels like some sort of man-made thing inside of him. So, like, metallic? Uh, yeah. Okay. Perhaps. Definitely, like, synthetic plastic metal, just not organs, you know? It seems that something was implanted in his stomach and he lacks organs. Probably what maybe sent him to the void. <laughs> A bit too early. Mm, I think they were probably taken soon. Anyway, pull it out. Let's see. Red, you've known this man. Do I have consent to pull the thing out? Yes, he's <laughs> long dead. <laughs> All right, I'll, tell, I'll yank it out. Very well. Oh, whip it out. Your hands tighten. God, guys, we're so close. Be done with tonight's session. <laughs> you, your hands tighten around whatever it is, the cord or, or handle of something, and you, you wrench it upward. And first, his eyes flicker open blank. Secondly, it's like the frayed end of a wire. Except as you yank it out, you realize that the fray ends are actually small teeth that just splay outward open into a thousand mouths and they launch at your throat. That is where we will end tonight's What? <laughs> what? <laughs> he just pulled out a... This is a note for me, dog. I don't like it. <laughs> wow. You ever just had Excellent a cable session. turn into a thousand mouths and jump at your throat? <laughs> then, you know. Days be like, I, uh, yeah. Well, what does Bookworm know, huh? I don't know, I don't know guys. Something fishy's coming on. <laughs> Can you change that to his voice? <laughs> and scene.